start, but I'm, I just pressed the start button. And it says we are live. Let me find the YouTube. It should create in about a minute. Michael, did you send out the uh, social tech logins already? <clears throat> I sent everything out. I started it up about uh, 10.45, 11 o'clock. So everybody who uh, wanted an email or was on the list should have gotten it. Okay. The fact that you all, all received them and and are got have gotten in the system tells me that at least the mechanism's working. We may have a couple of stragglers going. I didn't get a message. So it could be the spam folders common. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, there's the YouTube. I put it in our text chat. So we're live on YouTube. Um, if you pl if you play it, pa pause it or mute it as soon as you play it because it'll loop back. Is entertaining, but doesn't really. And also, um, sometimes the YouTube comments doesn't update regularly. So yep. a quick tip is just to change from new new comments to what is it popular comments. So you don't need to reload the site and stop the video again. You want to change it from popular to new, right? Yeah. Right. And then there's a 30 second delay, so before it shows up on YouTube. Okay, I'm typing up the email to go to everybody. There are six viewers, and there's already two people here who are not us. And we've got six minutes before we start. So sorry, I'm not going to talk about the World Cup too much. But I am filling out the email that's going to go out to everybody with all the, um, uh, uh, the software that's changing. All right, that's just wrong. <laughs> first. Should we mention um, how we got the uh, Hangout kind of organized, self-organized last time? Like basically Matt was um, answering the uh, questions from the comments uh, together with the product owner, with Michael probably in this case, and uh, the judges um, were like keeping track of the unanswered question from the comments. And then, like, kind of putting them to Matt while he was still answering the, the previous comments. And, yeah, I was basically doing background work, answering emails, sending stuff around, and sometimes also chipping in. Great. So with the four of us so far, I would guess that would be Michael would be product owner. I would be trying to help. Kim would be monitoring YouTube, and Mike would be doing his mic stuff. Yep. If that works for everybody, we got four minutes left. Um, Eat these real quick before people on YouTube are watching me. <laughs> yeah, I got some. Um, I got some, some 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 chocolates too. I don't know if they have brands are pretty universal. Do they have like Kit, Kit Kats in Australia? Are you Australia or New Zealand? Did I offend you? <laughs> I mean, Aussie has just moved to New Zealand. Okay. Where, where, where in New Zealand? Auckland. I'm trying to remember. We have a different wrapper on our Kit Kat. It's funny because um, when I, I was in Germany, I gave these away. Ooh, American chocolates, if they're imported. This is like not particularly good chocolate. You're in, you're, you're in Europe, you're like 100 miles from Belgium. 
Yeah. So, so my, my daughter packed it when she came back from Narita it, when she was in Japan. She brought it, half her suitcase. She came back with Japanese candy, and the one that every the thing that everybody wanted the most of were the green tea Kit Kats. Green tea? That's crazy. Yeah. They're they're really they are really good. <laughs> so you said Auckland? Yeah, I was in Auckland last year for stands. It oh yeah, nice. cool. It was it was nice, but Wellington was beautiful, like crazy. I'm gonna be back in Australia every like month or two for conferences. Anne Marie's been organizing heaps of stuff since I left. Ah, oh, Siggy's at work. Hey there, Siggy. Uh, How much do you hear about the back from the background noise? Some. Yeah, when you're talking, it'll, it'll be fine. You might want to mute when you're not talking. But. All right. Yeah, I'll mute it now. It's people that just got their bears. They'll be leaving the office soon. <laughs> I'm just finishing up this email to go to everybody. you are not from Oceana and want to play along, you'll need a login. Reach out to at mhoiser or at mlk testhead on Twitter. Maybe try hat the hashtag and get us your email address. Or leave it in the comments. Hey, Audrey's online. See you uh, in the chat. E. Good luck. Changes to social text that can introduce risk in this build. Follow my signature. Okay, are you guys on the Software Testing World Club players list? Do, do, you, do you get that email? I got it, yeah. I even went in and I added, uh, added my own little uh, nom de plume to uh, announce I was there. Um, um, Mike, does every Oceana player get the email to Software Testing World Club players at googlegroups.com? Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm, so, so not the at the moment. Is, Okay, so the deal is, uh, first off, everybody who has logged in and who has confirmed in, and when you sent out the World Cup judges and friends uh, group listing, as far as who got uh, associated with it... Uh, judges and friends is just like I hard-coded I hard -coded you guys. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So, so everybody should have at least gotten a message saying, hey, guess what, you've uh, been invited to this group. So it might be uh, in your inbox right now. I definitely got it. I responded to it. No, I mean, I just, I just sent an email to Software Testing uh, World Cup players. Links. I just, I just sent an email to the Google group saying, "These are all the changes to the software. Here's where the YouTube is. All this kind of stuff." I'll send it to Mike, and he can broadcast it to all the OCN ah. people, maybe. Oh, okay, I got you. Mean. Yeah. Mike, can you send this to all the players? Man, I should have done this exactly five minutes ago. But there it is. <laughs> That's all right. Well, this way we're all live now. But we're live. Everyone who's uh, on the uh, who's viewing the broadcast, we have 17 viewers. You should at least have the invite to qa1.socialtext.com. .net, not .com. QA1.socialtext.net, which is what we are testing. And 
we're trying to get you a list of the new features. Can we just put the list of features into YouTube, Michael, or is it like kind of not something we want to really broadcast? Well, I mean, again, it's uh, we're working with this. You know, this is a staging build. We're going to be announcing it anyway, uh, but since it's not officially released, yeah, let's 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 keep it to just a. So I'll just read it, and we'll talk. We'll start talking to Michael about about social text and. Uh, we'll talk to Mike and Siggy and, and um, Kim about uh, the, the process, right? So social text is, a, and I, I, I tested social text for three years. It's a fantastic little software as a service product. But my data is a little out of date. So I left in 2011, and, and Michael now more or less has my job. Um, <laughs> okay, it was, it was really. Oh, there's like, Ken. Hey. Hey. Is, is, where, is, where is he? Is he on Skype? Yeah, yeah uh, he's he's on actually he's on IRC right now. He's asking me where to go. Let me get the uh, get him in the Google Hangout. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So, Social Text is a collaborative web thing that started out as a wiki, and while I was there, we really expanded it to add uh, microblogging and um, widgets and a bunch of other things. It's basically, so it could be a corporate homepage. And it can have all your corporate profiles. You could look up your employees, and that can be tied to all of the writing and work and the projects that were, they were working on. So you could kind of run your business from a knowledge work standpoint from social text. And I'm sure they've added a ton of features since then. And um, we're trying to get out the email with the features, but um, Ken, uh, Ken said to uh, email him. Email him the, the URL. Yeah, or just uh, I, I just I just sent him the, the hangout one, so uh, yeah, see yeah, if he yeah. gets that. Just cut and paste the hangout to him, and, and, he, yep. and he look at it magically gets in. Um, Hello, Matt. Hey, there we hey go. Ken, how are you? Good. How are you? I just lost the there it is hangout window. It's been a while. <laughs> it has indeed. Hope you're well. Hope the channel is good. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's. I've got a, my daughter sleeping you upstairs, so I've got to remember to be quiet. I get excited on these things. So um, we're live. It's uh, it's four minutes into the competition. I should go to the, the the YouTube page and see if anybody's asking any questions yet. Everyone should have been invited to. Uh, oh, <laughs> everyone should have been invited to uh, QA1.socialText.net, which is a te a release build of Social Text, which you can, uh, we're going to be testing today. So. Maybe we should talk about for just a minute or two on iterating back between the new features that we've added. Or start with the software itself, the new features we've added, and then the general sort of rules of the competition and how to file bugs and that sort of thing. Um, did you, did Ken or Michael, do you want to speak for a minute or two about what social text is and how to use it, or how to get started? Yeah, well, I think this is Michael's show, so. Uh. <laughs> Okay. Well, so basically, yeah. So basically, the whole idea behind uh, behind social text is kind of imagine all of the uh, social tools that uh, that that are that are out in the world, but uh, secured and able to be behind your own firewall, so that you can collaborate in real time with the people that you're working with, and the the items that you design of uh, of value. And you don't have to worry about everybody uh, on the internet seeing what you're talking about and what you're working on. So one of the things for everybody who has signed up for this competition is that uh, every team has their own has their own account and they have their own work area that they'll be able to to work with. We can, if we so choose, uh, integrate some of those and we can cross pollinate. But as of right now, uh, there isn't any cross pollination, and that's kind of the whole point is we want to be able to let people see that uh, you unless we explicitly give you permission to do so you shouldn't be able to see what other people are, are doing in their in their separate accounts uh, if we do uh, decide to add people to it and so that we can we can check across then we can confirm that as well but the whole idea is you know we it's it's wiki it's a spreadsheet it's so that we call signals which is a lot like a Facebook wall uh, you can Include people's names and posts. You can have conversations. You can po you can post pictures and videos. Uh, you know, we just 
the way that you would use uh, you the way that you people typically use Facebook and Twitter right now would feel very at home uh, on, on on our signals page and uh, sharing the information from that. I hope that made sense. <laughs> well, it's a little bit out of out of context. Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> signals is a Twitter clone, basically, um, so it should look very familiar. What we call profiles or people are just a cut-down version of, uh, uh, you know, a cross between a company directory and, and the kind of stuff you put on Facebook, but it doesn't go so far as to have walls and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, it's mostly personal and professional information. There are groups. Some of the groups are private. You have to be invited to them. Others are public. You can, you can join them or form your own. So. We have groups for everything from, um, you know, super secret machinations to uh, chocolate lovers. Uh, and then uh, there's the traditional company started 10 years ago as, as the nice little wiki company. So there's a pretty extensive wiki with wiki, uh, wiki wig editing uh, and spreadsheets. And the idea is to be able to collaborate freely across time and space using these integrated tools. Uh, and so each sort of vertical slice, you, you might recognize, oh, that's like Twitter, and that's like Chatter, and that's like Facebook, and that's like activity streams, and, and why don't you have chat? Uh, but the point is, it's it can be uh, private, and uh, it can be uh, it's software as a service, right? We do all the work, uh, and these applications are built on top of our own platform, and they're integrated together. So, when things happen in different parts of the application, they get reported and reported uh, to everybody. Back to you. <laughs> which, which you, me or Matt? <laughs> yeah. Well, don't you have something to get started on? Oh yeah. Well, okay. So uh, we do, we do, we did uh, go through and we made uh, a, a preliminary list. Uh, Matt kind of scrubbed it a little bit so that it uh, was wasn't too specific because, of course, we want to have people get a chance to actually look at things and play with it. But I gave a kind of a rundown as to what uh, you know, what's what's new or what what you can look for uh, inside of of this release. And uh, one of the factors that uh, we definitely want to make a mention of is that we've done a number of, uh, you know, we, we've done a number of security enhancements. And uh, we're not going to go into details to explain exactly what those are, but uh, we encourage you to try to see if you can, uh, if you want, if you want to try to muck with our forms, be our, be my guest, and uh, let us know if something fascinating comes your way. Um, we've. Uh, the the comments is a new uh, is a new aspect to this now in the sense that uh, where before comments were just appended to a wiki page as as an as an item at it's getting late I want to make sure I word this right uh, instead of it being just an appending to the wiki page now it's its own separate component completely and the database handles it in a totally different way so that uh, you can comments. You can like comments. You can reply as much as you want to, and it doesn't actually clutter up the wiki page itself. So that's one new uh, detail that would be very uh, interesting to have people play with and test. Uh, there are now a number of widgets that you can add and that you can edit and uh, put into the put into the dashboard and also other places in in the site as well. And so that's going to be something we would definitely want to encourage people to take a look at and play with and configure and tell us what you see. Uh, one other area that's gotten a lot of attention, and uh, I, will, I will actually say that I have uh, kind of driven the office part way crazy with this, is the fact that we've done a very big push with accessibility, specifically Section 508 compliance. Uh, being able to interact with tools like uh, screen readers and uh, speech recognition software, and that's been something that we spent a lot. We spent a lot of time on that, 
So uh, I I encourage if anybody wants to uh, go in and play a bit with uh, the accessibility features, uh, I welcome you to. And uh, I'm sure there's other areas that we could uh, we could enhance and do better on. So go for that. Uh, let me see what other things. Uh, other than that, I mean, actually, a, a, f a fair amount of uh, what's what, what's been going on and what we have is actually kind of under the hood. Uh, m much of the changes that uh, I've been working on for the past couple of months are things that you're not really going to see from the UI, but they have had a significant uh, impact on availability and uh, also on you know we're, we're it, it's giving us a pretty good uh, a, a pretty good boost in responsiveness and uh, in performance for 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 the actual applications and how they all interact with each other and again it's <laughs> it's 12 it's 12 13 night for me and I got into work at uh, you know 7:30 this 7:30 this morning. So well, okay. So let's talk about things you could test, right? So one of the major changes is the commenting feature. Yes. So if you can uh, create a wiki page and then uh, um, edit it, change it, and then make comments, that might be something that has some sort of regression defect in it, right? So did you create? Did they start out with a wiki when you created the accounts, um, Michael? So every so every Every account has a central workspace, and that has a central wiki. That, do, let's, let's assume they've logged in. How do they get to that central wiki? They would need to go over to, uh, let's see, can I share? So you can actually see. You can what share your at. screen, yep. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me get there so I can show people what that would do. So let me get to our Hangout, and let's do screen share real quick. And where are we? Come on. Let's do this. Right, let me separate this out. There we go. Hang on. So now, there we go. So this gives you a look at uh, what, what 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 the actual page looks like. When I was talking about uh, various widgets and what you can do, you can actually click on Add Widget, and that will give you a number of options that you can use to spice up your page. And every account ha can have a different layout and, and choice. Every user could even have a different. Uh, layout and choice of widgets that they want to use. But in this case, if you want to actually look at the workspace, you just click on content. Come on. That's me over here. And you'll notice that right here in content, you have options for workspaces. And now this is, this is a number of workspaces that I have. For everybody that's set up an account, your workspaces are going to look a little bit different. But this is what we have right here. And if we want to go to, say, Oceana Central, this is, this is a basic wiki, a, a very basic wiki page with, uh, with, with a simple template. And we just want to, if we want, we can just click New Page. And that gives us an option to create a brand new page. And it allows it to say who, you know, who should have access to it and where to and what type of content we want to make. Click save, and there you go. It's as simple as that. That's uh, that's the that's the, the fastest way I can demonstrate how to, how to make a how to make a page. And now, hang.
hey, wait a minute, your user ID has a picture of you on it. Um, Imagine that. No one else does automatically. How did you do that? It's magic. No, it's not that. It, it's not magic. If you go up right here where you'll see uh, my username, first thing you'll see is, is, is uh, View Profile. Just click on View Profile. And uh, I put some stuff in here so that we have a little bit of uh, you know, little stuff that you can look at. But just click on Edit Profile. And once you click Edit Profile, you can now go in and you can make changes. Upload image of your choice. Put in as much personal information as you want to or don't. Uh, we do require your, you know, the fir uh, you know, first name has to be in there. Uh, we do require a title and a, and a location. Uh, if you don't have, if those are empty and you click save, it's gonna just basically complain at you. Uh, everything else you can put in as much or as little as you as you want. I just decided to fill this thing up as much as I could so that you could see some see some examples of. Lots of content. Just click cancel and it brings you right back. So, Michael, we've had a substitution. Someone wants to get in Franklin Liu. Uh, I need to invite him. Can you can you Skype me the URL that I can get into um, something back Andy to invite him? Oh yeah, sure. Um, well, I don't seem to have an invite button in the upper right, so I'm assuming that permissions are slightly different than how I usually use social text. Oh, hang on, wait. So you want? Uh, do you want to invite? So do you want to invite him to a particular account, or do you want to just um, invite him? I need to get the name of his team. We want to invite him to his team's account. You're right. You, you created him by team, right? Yes. Ex Expert Clearview team. Okay. Hang on a second. Let me. You're broadcasting. I don't know if you want to show. No, no. Hang on. Okay. Let me let me take that off the screen. Then yes, we'll take a look at that. Uh, let's see. How do I not share screen? There we go. Okay, I think that's... Matt, in the meantime, we got a question coming in. Which browsers do most of your target market use? Michael? Uh, we, we've put a lot of effort to uh, being able to make sure that it is cross-platform and that it is cross-browser. So uh, if you're using Chrome, Firefox, uh, Safari, all of those work. Uh, Older versions of IE do certainly have some uh, interesting reactions. How far back is officially supported compatibility in, in IE? With what we have right now, basically, uh, we can... I, I would say at this point right now, anything, anything lower than IE8, you're taking your uh, user experience into your own hands. So it's worth noting that in the thing that I just emailed out, we only got one bounce. This build has bug fixes related to displaying content in IE of various flavors. So regression testing IE would seem like a smart thing to do because we know that we changed the code. Um, I don't have any more details on that. Michael or Ken might be able to elaborate on what the bug fixes were for IE. And of course, it's always possible that a bug fix to make IE 7 works breaks the latest version of Firefox, right? <laughs> I would say okay. IE is pretty popular, though, because it's a pretty corporate application, right? Well, if, yeah. you, if you look at um, the uh, multi-tenant service that we host, which has, let's say, order of a few hundred accounts on it, it's just about 50% IE and 50% uh, split between um, Firefox and Chrome and a handful of, of uh, mobile users. So yeah, IE is still uh, predominant in the business world. And then we have other constraints that require us to uh, make the product run in IE 10, 9, 8, and even 7. So did you say seven? Is seven supported? Well, yeah. I mean, technically seven is supported, but its performance is so bad that it would be a... Uh, Caveat emptor. Oh, yeah, a crime to ask anybody to actually <laughs> uh, 
do anything with it, especially uh, in a session like this one. But yes, it's supported. All right, okay, Matt Franklin. Be, Franklin Lou has been invited. Cool, great. So in this case, yeah, actually, so that, so uh, th this might be worth uh, worth noting just to make sure that again, there's a there's there, there's a, a scope and a context here. Uh, when it comes to groups, and, uh, and and if you have a group that's that that's public, you can actually invite people in in a public group and say, hey, we, you know, I want to give you access to this, and you can you can come in and you can join up with that group even if you are you know not part of the immediate company or the or the few names that we've put into into each account when you add a user to an account directly though that's something that's that's handled by that's handled right now by an administrator uh, when it comes to groups and uh, and if you have a group that's that, that's public you can actually someone has youtube on play yeah just press the pause button kim it should. Sorry. You can watch. The, you can see the YouTube comments, yeah. but but uh, audio is possible. <laughs> it's just a Windows bug. Well, let's see. I, but you know, that's actually. Let me take a look real quick. So I'll go to OC. We got another question. What mobile devices are expected to be supported? So. It, at this point in time, we do have we have a mobile app that uh, is that that is in place for for iPhone, and we also have a a mobile interface. So if, so we actually do have a stream down uh, interface that you can use uh, that's that gives you a, a mobile experience. Our actual mobile app is a little different. It doesn't have it does not have all of the features that you see here with a desktop application. The the mobile app basically is focused on looking at contact information and looking at at uh, at signals. It's it, it's a much more it's a much more stripped down version than what you see here. But uh, hang on a second, I can if we want to get back here show you what uh, the mobile interface looks like. It's been a while since I've used um, the mobile interface for social text, but it used to be fantastic because it was very, very low bandwidth. So Yes. So if you, you click on mobile... If you're on your phone, you want it to just load fast, and you don't want to have to wait for it to download the, the 200K JavaScript. Or, yeah. It was really big, the amount of JavaScript on the front end. Um, and, and the mobile was just, just fantastic. Yeah, you can get to it through... Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, so you can actually... So for example, if you were on a tablet and you wanted to just see what the what the mobile interface looks like, this is it. And correct, it's a much it, it's much more stripped down. It it moves moves quite a bit faster, but it's also. What did you click to get to um, the the mobile interface there, Michael? Uh, right down at the bottom of the screen. Let me get back to. Yeah, mobile in the bottom right. And now we're in signals, right? And you could use yeah. signals just like just like Twitter, and it's it's probably a Correct. decent place to start because it's just such a simplistic interface. Oh, you have 400 characters, not 140. Yep. So hey, go back to the. Maybe I'll show show my screen. Let me share my screen and um. Why isn't it doing it? Screen share. Oh, probably because I need to let go of it. So. Then I'm going to show in the video call uh, ba, 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 ba. this one. Start three here. Yeah. So this is kind of cool. I was just going to just I just when when I was testing this, this is a true story. It's kind of fun. Under people, you see the I right there, right? Um, it was all lowercase, and on an iPod or iPhone. You could not physically click the eye because it was only one pixel wide. But it worked in the simulator. So I actually had to like 
say, hey, I raised a bug, I'm not able to physically click this. And then we made them all uppercase, and they were two characters wide, two pixels wide, and you could do it with the stylus if you were careful. So that's just one of my favorite bugs. That's kind of the difference between a simulator, between physical and mobile. Was, was, uh, it was early on. I think, you know, iPhone 2 was out or something. It was a while ago. It was fun. So I, I hope everyone has the um, the. You should have an in, in, invite to Pronk, which is our bug tracking system. You can use Pronk to file defects. Um, it's just remarkably straightforward. Um, and uh, you're going to start. So we're 27 minutes in, we've got exactly three hours. At the end of those three hours, you're going to want to file a bug, bug a test report. And of course, the test report you're going to want to email before the three hours is up, so you have to write it probably an hour and a half in. You start working on that test report. Okay, let's see if there's anything going on on Twitter or, or the YouTube channels. Matt, we've had a question about what is the maximum size of the file that can be added to a reply to a signal? That's a good question. Siggy's asking me a question in the background that might actually be a good one to uh, comment with everybody else. So uh, by default with an account, every, everybody gets access to the main workspace. And so if you have an account with say 200 people in it and you have the central the central workspace all 200 people are going to be able to see that central workspace you can also create groups and uh, inside of the groups option you can either create a group that's open and anybody can be added to it or you can create a private group with yourself and two other people and as far as everybody else is concerned whatever goes on there nobody else can see it Okay, Michael, I don't know if you heard um, uh, Kim's, Kim ask a question off the YouTube channel. What's the maximum size of the file that can be added to a reply to a signal? Maximum size of a file that can be added to a reply to a signal. It's supposed um, to be 50 megabytes. You can have some fun with that. Uh, uh, 50 megabytes is an attachment, yes. So would that be 50 megabytes, as in 124 by 124, or 500, comma, 000, comma, 000? Nobody really knows, do we? <laughs> it's okay. We can certainly find out. I don't, I, I don't, th I don't think we care what the format is. I think it's, uh, it's uh, you know, five... 100 times 10 to the 6 bytes, 50 times 10 to the 6 bytes. Okay. So let's see. Um, We're getting a question on the mobile app, which makes me wonder. They're asking if the mobile app should be tested. Do we have any specific bug fixes to the mobile app this round? If there aren't any, do, are we worried about regression defects? Or for that matter, who cares about regression? Are there any, like, if they find a defect in, like, it might not be a regression defect. They might find just a regular old defect that's been there for a while in mobile. Do we care? What's the best place folks could spend their time and energy investing it in risk? Michael, what do you think? Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that, that's quite a question. Um, honestly, I would say that if you are, if you are really looking to be adventurous and you want to try to say you know that you want to if, if if you're looking for the for the most risky areas well the simple fact is is that we've done a number of security enhancements to the application and so if you really want to see that we have closed up anything or that we haven't left anything that would be uh, potentially embarrassing there's any number of avenues you might want to Explore within reason. I'm not asking people to, you know, 
put on a distributed denial of service attack here. That would not be good. But outside of that, if you want to try to upload interesting and fun components to our pages and see if you can execute things that shouldn't be executed, I welcome you to try. You know, I, I'm not sure uh, that I agree with you there, Michael. Um, I would think that that the most risky and valuable stuff that could be tested are the new UI features. Um, if you don't know how to test for security holes or where they might be, uh, I don't. It doesn't seem like a good use of time. So, no. um, the biggest changes to the app are that comments are no longer just. Um, Stylized edits to a page, comments um, exist as an entirely separate objects, and they behave a lot more like signals uh, in that they are uh, they're threaded, um, they're displayed in um, uh, chronological order. So when a signal gets a reply, it bubbles up to the top of the, of the stack, and the same is true for comments now. And comments can have attachments. Uh, just like signals, that's a deliberate, you know, kind of reuse of the pattern. But it hasn't been deployed, um, or if it has, not for very long. Uh, and then the other thing is we've got a couple of new widgets. What what version is running on QA1? Is it, is it the staging stuff? Yes. Uh, I... so we've got some really interesting new widgets that uh, attempt to do fancy things with video content. Um, or display information uh, independently. So one's called uh, the carousel widget. The other one is called uh, the uh, information widget. And the uh, third one is the user information widget. Again, those are hot off the press. Um, so if you were interested in stress testing or seeing if you could, uh, could break something uh, without having to be a, a security Tester, that would be a good place to focus. Okay, yeah, I, I, I have to say I agree. Again, you're, 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 you're seeing a little bit of my myopia simply because uh, I've been doing a lot of the security stuff. So, good point. So Alice, Alice Chu is asking in the dashboard tab. Okay, that's the. I'll, I'll, I'll try to reply to her in the YouTube video. Also, Mark. Tuka Maru was asking for details. He wants a list of bug fixes. I don't know if we can get him that. Well, well, we actually provide such a list, but it's uh, it, it's pretty sparse. It's it's one liners. So if you if you see something, I mean, this this is again, this is primarily uh, to inform our customers about customer reported bugs that have been fixed. But if you go into the into the help wiki at the top of the of the front page of the help wiki, which is just slash help, uh, you'll see some release notes and the release notes uh, contain bug fixes. And you might be able to tell from the title uh, what the fix is or Michael might be able to give you some details. Thanks, Ken. I'll get that up and put that on the on the chat. That's cool. Usability improvements and fixed bugs. Here we go. Yeah, so, you, you a, is there a URL for that, Michael? Uh, yeah, actually, it's just if you go into the help if you go into the help wiki and let me grab this for you. I'll just copy it so you can copy and paste it. Someone else is asking for a list of known issues. I'm guessing that would be like a long list. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, we just don't have that, and the help wiki is is available in the upper right corner of uh, any page in the pull down menu uh, under your your username. So you can see uh, uh, view my profile, um, my settings, settings, and go to help. and then help. So the list of bug fixes is not particular. I thought it was more. Is that just a list of things worth mentioning to customers? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, one of the nice things about being in the software as a service business as opposed to, say, 
something like Mozilla, which is a very open community where everything is, you know, discussed in the open, then uh, we have to we treat customer bugs separately, and and the stuff that we find while we're doing development, we don't even consider those to be bugs. Those are just things the developers have to fix. <laughs> Uh, and of course, things come in uh, from the field, uh, and if they're actually bugs, I mean that's another thing your your audience might be interested in. Um, we do have a support team. Most of the things that they cope with do not actually get turned into defect reports because they're everything from misunderstandings about how features actually work to uh, Installations that are, are private and so idiosyncratic that they need attention, but there's no way we could uh, simulate those uh, situations um, in, in our test lab. One of the most challenging things about social text is that its entire reason for being is um, for, for users to generate content. And when users generate content, Mm. It's fun. It's it's also challenging. Uh, people do the damnedest things. Uh, so again, I often think, well, you know, online banking must be really hard. Uh, and on the other hand, online banking is extremely regimented in the kind of data it's willing it's willing to deal with and the kind of things it's willing to let you do. Uh, whereas social software. Uh, is much more uh, free range, I guess, <laughs> is one way to think about it. Yeah, certainly you add the features and your, your customers come up with ideas to use that you didn't consider in the first place. So um, one of the one of the new features is LMS as a page type. I have, what's LMS? Well, there, that's a good... Uh, I'm not sure how that... Um, uh, leaked out there. LMS stands for a learning management system. And one of the things that we're doing uh, with social text, since social text is now uh, one of, I think, six sibling companies, um, all of the others of which, with one exception, are in the uh, human resources, or what we used to call human resources space, is um, we're using social text as an integration platform. So the page types up till now have been really simple, wiki pages and spreadsheets. Um, and now we're going to have a page type for each of our sibling organizations. Uh, but those are not, that's not a general purpose thing. Uh, if you buy social text because you want social text, you don't get any of that stuff. But some of the stories uh, that we finished in, in, in this in this recent um, release is all stuff preparing to roll out this uh, in the, the first version of this integration uh, with our sibling companies. Yep. Great. Thanks. So Alice Chu ask. In the I'm new, what do I do box, it says, click where it says your profile just above this box. And I've gone and actually created a profile, so I probably can't. That's probably the upper right where it, um, So in the, in the I'm new, what do I do, it says fill in your profile. Click where it says your profile just above this box and fill in the form. Don't forget a picture. So what that is referring to is that is actually in the upper right. And uh, we're, in, in, in my case, if you were to look at uh, my screen, it would say hi and my name and my picture. And then when you click down on that, you'll see where it says view profile. Just by clicking view profile, that will open up that page. And one of the options is clicking edit profile. So she wants to actually get out of that little drop, the modal dialog, and actually go edit her own profile there. But you're yes. telling her to do. Okay. Okay. So Tobias Geyer, who is was one of the winners of the competition last year, is on the um, hmm. he's on the Twitters. That's the hashtag is STWC2014, and uh, you could reach out to him if you have any questions about what they did last year. 
he's in, in Europe, and he's going to be at the World Cup Championship Finals in Germany this November. Um, somebody is saying they don't have a password. We need their email address. DM it or um, just... Okay, time for me to go back to the video. So, um, Siggy and Kim are, are locals, and you guys have been quiet. What are what are you thinking? What are you concerned about? Well, I was concerned about my laptop, but I've got my issues sorted out now and uh, monitoring YouTube. There is a question on there. I've just asked for it to be rephrased slightly. Um, and also, what does the desktop what does the desktop installs functionality, please? I guess is there any functionality installed on the client side? Yeah, Social Text Desktop used to be a Adobe Air application that would work on any kind of desktop environment, Linux, uh, Windows, Mac that had an Adobe interpreter, and it was primarily a Signals client which is the sort of clone of Twitter. But um, Michael was a lot more current than I am on that. You can download and install that. It's been sort of uh, on the back burner for about two years. There was a, a period of time uh, before uh, mobile devices became ubiquitous that customers were interested in um, being able to use most of the, of the features of social text without necessarily having to have a browser open. And, and uh, desktop is basically a standalone packaging of what we talked about a few minutes ago, the, the mobile interface. So it has signals, people, and activities, and the wiki pages in a sort of limited lightweight format. Um, and you, and again, it's it still works. Um, we haven't paid any attention to it for a while. Yeah, it was kind of funny. Shortly after Michael started at Social Text, he was talking about what he was working on, and he was talking about getting rid of the old legacy Perl code. And I said, "That's that's like." I helped write that. <laughs> Terrible leg. Well, you know, you know, you got you got to sell it somehow. Um, what's behind social text these days is an interesting mix of of uh, core Perl business logic, uh, Java that runs the indexing engine, uh, Node.js, which is a brand new way to um, program in JavaScript and its descendants. Uh, in the back end, not just in the browser. There's a little bit of Ruby sprinkled around in there, I think. Um, so it's become a little more uh, uh, ecumenical. Uh, probably you all know that programming has changed radically in the last five to ten years. It's not about knowing a particular language, whether it's Perl or Java or whatever. It's about the ability to quickly synthesize out of the thousands of libraries and packages that are available um, the functionality that you need and to be able to understand those. It's, it's really a very different game. And I have a lot of admiration for, for the people who can, who can do that. Um, but again, that it's no longer possible to say, well, I'm a pro programmer, it's not Perl, so I'm not going to touch it. That doesn't fly. Yep, that's, that's true. You want full stack developers who can learn the newest thing right now. So I'm actually just logged into Pronk, Agile Manager by HP, and I'm looking at the defects. I don't know if Michael has access to this, but... Um, URL? 
There's a, someone claims to have found a significant security vulnerability, which I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna message Michael over Skype, so it doesn't show up any any comments. Let's take a look. Uh, I I was looking at the defects that are coming in, uh, and I saw that, so I had to try and see if I could replicate it. And I actually found a similar one, but not in the same place. So it is actually a security vulnerability. Okay, uh, I just I just texted it to Michael. Did Internet, I unmute Explorer ten? Yeah, I heard you, Siggy. Thanks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you can text, you want to. You want to. Um, we've got a the Skype background chat. Maybe so you can can put how his defect is different there. But so um, we've got five bonus points uh, possible for teams. So it's it's uh, it's what? Uh, did you find the right bugs? Were they written well? Did you find uh, twenty mm. uh, twenty points for that? Twenty points for did you find the right bugs. Twenty points for were they written well. Twenty points for non-functional bugs, which we're still, we're working on the grading of, of how to do it. Um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not as excited about breaking non-functional in its own category as I used to be. Um, Twenty points for your test reports accuracy. Did you find the right information? And twenty points for the quality of the writing. You know, did you put the executives to sleep? Was it was it well written? That gives you 100 points. And there's five bonus points for, gosh, that was cool. And um, one thing that I've given bonus points out for the North America was it was a defect that the um, the customer didn't know about. This uh, this is, this is uh, hadn't found yet. This um, Snagit uh, TechSmith product. And they said, wow, we got to fix that right now. There was actually one where they said, "Wow, that's uh, we got We have to change some of our messaging in public about this." Um, that's a good, that's a good way to earn bonuses. And I think that um, defect fourteen probably falls in that category. Mary Ashton Martin. Let me see. So I don't know, Michael and Ken. Do you guys have access to Pronk? Do you have access to the um, uh, the bug tracker? Um, I don't, and I, I'll leave that to to Michael since it's, uh, it's approaching 1 a.m. here where I am on the west coast of the Ameri the North Americas, <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to uh, say good night pretty soon, and I'll check with Michael tomorrow on how things went. Yeah, thanks for playing. I know that uh, I haven't done this a couple of times. Having a real product owner that can even come in for a little while. That can answer real questions on real software that is really pre-release makes a big difference on this kind of event, as opposed to sort of go test Amazon. Well, Matt. Well, I, I'm, eager, I'm eager to see the results. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and any competent tester is a friend of mine. Yeah. So what I, I can I can tell you guys because I've been monitoring for for North America. We well, there's small, less teams here. So maybe we'll find that these teams are more dedicated. Um, there's a lot of signal to no there's a lot of noise to signal um, in the 600 bugs that we found. A lot of in this kind of time period, to be fair, people just don't have a good grasp of the feature set. So if something happens and they're confused. They don't understand it. It must be a bug, and it's 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 no, it's supposed to work that way. It's, just, it's a training issue. It's just completely natural. Um, the bugs that I'm seeing so far look pretty uh, look to be like real bugs so uh, we'll see okay so Henry I'm just basically just click on I don't know my password so I've just sent him a uh, so he needs to check his email to see the email will come from no reply at socialtext.com so he might want to check to see if it's showing up in his spam filter We have one question in the comment uh, about uh, expected behavior in regards of posting to an old signal. Like, should it move up to the top because you just commented on it? Okay. 
Um, let's see. I, I think we have a small terminology uh, issue here. If the question is when you reply to a signal, should it bubble up to the top, the answer is yes. Um, comments and signals are, are similar now, but, but they're not the same. And um, so you can't actually comment on a signal, but perhaps we're talking about replying to a signal. Another common thing that we're getting is a lot of, I can't log in. And based on the sort of threads, I think what might be happening is it's some, some links in social text, probably hard code to socialtext.net, which is the production homepage. Right? Or the code does, if you don't log in, go to socialtext.net. So they, make, they do something, yeah, log they end in. up at socialtext.net, yes. That, and then they that can't would... log in from there. So, so if you That's can't log in. That's not supposed to happen, but... Uh... And if, it, if it is happening, that's that's a good bug. That's my guess. It's a common like several people have said I can't log in several times in the in the thread, and I've said make sure you're in QA one, and I get the impression that that fixed it. So yeah. yeah, if you could reproduce that, if you could reproduce that, and that's it's really a sort of an infrastructure bug, right? Because in production, that would be fine. No, it would only be fine if you happen to be using that that server. It wouldn't be fine if, if you had a private installation behind a firewall and right. Right. Right, it up right, 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 right. out sure. on the internet. <laughs> I'm imagining that, that you've, got enough, you've got enough private installations. My voice is raising. I need to keep my voice down. But I, I imagine that you've got enough private installations that work that you're not, that probably isn't the bug. There's something else going on there. Well, no. I, I, I mean, those installations are, are carefully configured by system administrators. Uh, Michael brought up this test environment, you know, I don't know, sometime within the last six hours and probably didn't take care of every uh, every last configuration option. Some of them may be defaulting, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm going through and taking a look at some of them right now. So That would make sense to me that, that this particular QA1 was wasn't configured quite perfectly, so that it is a defect, but it might not might it's a not really a social text defect. Probably worth logging. It's certainly certainly worth knowing. Yeah. Yeah. So we should talk a little bit about the process. Um, when we um, um, once all the bugs are filed, tomorrow will be the business day for me, so I can get into judging. Um, I don't know. I'm sure that Siggy and Kim have been following the, the, the long and painful conversations on the North America list about how we're doing North America. The good news is Oceania is a lot, lot smaller. It's going to be it's going to be an easier thing to judge. And uh, we'll go through the bugs. And we'll try to reproduce them. Which this will be a little bit easier because it's web-based stuff, right? Um, and reproduction, can I reproduce it as part of, the, is, it, is, it, is it written well, which is 20 points. And the bugs that we think are reproducible that are significant bugs, and, uh, we pass on to the product owners, and they say, hey, we care, we know about it, we don't know about it. You know, that's a way of assigning bonuses and, and getting to the, um, the, the, did you find the right bug score. And... Um, um, that's pretty much the process. I'm missing something. But that's, that's pretty much the process. Uh, over the next few days, I imagine we'll have this judged within a week or less, and we'll have, we'll have an announcement up for, for the OC, Oceana winner. Oh, I was going to... Um, one Matt, for, for, this is Ken again. For, for my information, how many, active, how many people are on, on right now and actively participating? Twelve teams, an average of three people per team, I think. That's very significant. And I'd also like to uh, go back and give a little credit where credit is due. Uh, we didn't mean to uh, talk anybody out of this. In the I knew what do I do, which is a boilerplate widget that comes on the front of every dashboard, and it says click where it says your profile just above this box. Well, <laughs> that box used to be on the right, and now it's on the left. So that text should have changed. 
and uh, it no longer says your profile uh, anywhere on this page. And so it actually ought to say, say something like, uh, you know, hey. comes over your name in the upper right corner, and then. Uh, Hang on, you're raising the bugs for them now, Ken. I'm sorry. Now, now you're finding the bugs for them. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to be f fair. I, I know where all the bodies are, are buried, but someone pointed that out about <laughs> three minutes ago, and we kind of glossed it over. And when I actually went and looked. I said, again, because I've been here for so long, oh, yeah, that used to be over on the right, and there used to be a your profile link above it, and neither of those things are true any longer. Okay. Yep, so thank you, Ken. I'm, I just put that in YouTube for Alice Chu to file that as a bug. It's a real bug. Excellent. One with, okay. with Mitch. And it's kind of, um, it's interesting with talk about test strategy. So one of the great test strategies Social Text has historically used is running the business on a, on a on a beta version of the software. So the company is somewhere between three days and two weeks ahead of the rest of the universe um, in using the software. But that particular bug is, I'm a new user. Make sure you do the thing with the stuff. And unless we get a, unless, unless Social Text got a new employee that week and they sat down for the first time to use staging, they're never going to see that pop up, right? So, uh, um, in in the wonderful coverage social text gets for free through staging, the new user experience might not be covered as well as they'd hoped. Oh, that's absolutely true. So, uh, so, so what Matt is is saying um, is we run the company entirely on our own product. So, with the exception of. Um, you know, doing having Salesforce, which everybody has, right, and some accounting software. Um, we literally try to not use stuff if we can find a way to do it inside Social Text. Uh, and so, um, what's true is exactly what Matt said. Uh, pretty soon, everybody is an expert, uh, and everyone is blind to the stuff that goes by every <laughs> single day, like the boilerplate in these widgets. Uh, if you go down to learning resources, there's a whole bunch of links to various things there, and I would guess that uh, you know, some of them uh, may not actually be functional or useful, but uh, all of this stuff is sort of in, in the purview of the marketing department, and so engineering uh, tends, uh, tends not to see it. And it, that's why it's really good to have some fresh eyes on this mm. stuff. Okay, I just got an email from YC Chong asking for a login. I'm going to put it in the, the comments if Michael can create it. Okay. So, which, let's see, hold on. It's, it's very... I put it in the comments of this of this uh, Google Hangout. Okay. Just a little statistic in the meantime. I think 50% of the registered teams have already locked box. So, we are on. Right. And on that note, I'm going to say good night and, and good hunting. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. And, really good to, really uh, good to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Quite interested in, in uh, Michael's report. So have fun. Will do. Appreciate it. All right, so who is... Sorry, Matt, I'll let you know in a second. Oh, oh, I'll get it. The user is YC Chong. Okay. Now, I mean, what what group should he be with? Oh, or team. She? His team? I don't, I don't know the team name. Oh, shoot. Hold on, let me take a look. I got an email from them. Uh, 
looks like they were on the original. It looks like they were in the original list of people to. That seemed strange. So I'm looking to see if I can find them. Hold on, let's see. Uh, I just want to make sure because if if they are a part of a team, I want to associate them with the correct team. Absolutely, sure. Let's see if I... Yok Chin Chong, Team Shutterbug. Oh, okay, there it is. It looks like I would. It's not, they should have had one created. Yeah. Is the email address changed? Yeah. Um, let me take a look. Hold on a second. Yok Chin Chong C25770 is there. Just a second. Let me take a look at that user. We show you as a uh, user requires confirmation. So hold on. Let me see if. Okay, so uh, for C25770, they need to, let's see if I can do a confirm. Can you, can you manually reset the password? Yes. Can you Skype me a fake password? I you can. Up as and we just, I just yeah. email them. Here's your password, buddy. Yep, I can do that. Hold on, coming right now. All right, is that got it? Uh, yes. I'm gonna email him. Okay. So let's take a look. So. No, qa1.socialtext.net. Anything happening on Twitter? Not Let's much. I'm just looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, um, Siggy works for a company called Atlassian. They make mm -hmm. some other wiki product. I forget. It's like confusing ints or something. What's it called? Tell us about tell us, tell us about Atlassian. Well, what do you know? Want to know, Matt? Um, um, I just moved here from Sweden uh, to Sydney to work for Atlassian. It's uh, actually quite a nice place to be. It's Friday afternoon, so it's uh, beer o'clock. Um, and, um, well, I'm actually not working with Confluence at all. I'm working with Fishbowl Fishbowl, which is a, a code review tool. So, so the possibility of browsing and code review tool. But Wait a minute. Which, did you say FishEye or what, what code review tool? Crucible is the code review tool. FishEye is a code repository browsing tool. And they are, they, they work together like this. Yep, yep. I've, I've, I've seen Fisheye. I haven't done. So 
when I was at Social Text, I made this very strong opinionated push that Social Text was a fantastic tool for um, software engineering process to do uh, um, to to manage the flow of the work with Kanban and to um, uh, we could have just built out the software engineering tools and um, uh, Atlassian of course had Jira in Confluence years before that and and Jira is sort of taken over the world as one of the standard processy tools and it's cheap. Right, right. It's just kind of funny going into a client site and I, and and and, and the, the tool that we're using is Jira. So I don't know if you've you probably used Jira at other gigs, right? Like just just in yes. doing software stuff. Yeah. Yes, yes. Before coming here, I used Jira and Confluence a lot. So. Was there a question there, Matt? It, it it was built up like a question. Not really. I wasn't good. I was yeah. just, um, you know, making conversation. You guys have yeah, been quiet. It's it's, it's, kind it's, of, uh, it's, it's interesting there. to uh, actually when you said that to use your own uh, products within the company and yeah, you can just imagine how much we use in our dog fooding. Um, just our wiki and Jira and everything, and our code reviews are quite extensive. Uh, it's an interesting, um, interesting environment. Yeah, we do, we do, we do very much the same thing uh, in in ours. I mean, very literally, as Ken had mentioned earlier, we actually run ninety percent of of our business functions in Social Text itself. We do right. all, pretty much all of our work in it, uh, with the exception of there's just a couple, there's maybe one or two. Uh, business functions that we keep out just kind of as a fail-safe. Like if if the whole system goes down, we don't want to be completely at the mercy. But uh, otherwise, yeah. pretty much everything that we do, we do within social texts. So mm -hmm. that's that's good and it's bad in a sense because you know, like like uh, like Ken had mentioned, there are just certain things that we've you know gotten used to. We've just gotten used to doing, and because we get used to doing them, somebody else would go by and go. That does that. That's not worded right, or that's not in the right place. You know, oh, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's exactly. not. Exactly. Yeah, I think there was, there was one time we had an SSL bug when I was there that was like, if your system was configured so that you could use either SSL or non-SSL, just HTTP, then it should just work. And we test on a staging all the time, which was SSL only. So we just we totally missed that bug. Um, fixed it pretty quick, but um, it caused I think it caused some strange problems with like images because some images were being served HTTP, but you were stuck in SSL only. Therefore, it wouldn't serve it up because it wasn't secure. Like that's that's how we caught it. Fun times. No, I you know Siggy seriously I I just uh, I appreciate that you're judging you're volunteering your time. It's kind of a big deal, and I uh, wanted to give you a chance to talk. Now, Siggy, I've known for years. I knew him when he was in Sweden. Um, uh, even before then, he came over to the States a couple of times. Kim, I don't know very well, so while we wait for comments, uh, Kim, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Pat. Um, so I'm a software test manager working in Auckland, New Zealand at the moment, um, working as a consultant on various projects at the moment on a SharePoint Online project, which is interesting. So I've never worked with uh, SharePoint Online before doing that. Um, as well as being a co-organizer of the Sydney Testers Meetup before I moved over here, I'm now co-organizer of the Auckland Testers Meetup. Um, in Sydney, we might have struggled to fill the room, although it was a bigger room. In Auckland, I have to say, these meetings fill up within an hour of being posted, which is fantastic. Um, and we've actually had some complaints about how fast they fill up, so we might need to move to a bigger group. But so far, we like to keep it small, around 20 people, so that nobody's afraid to get up and present to the group. And it's a very friendly atmosphere. So I haven't made it to a weekend testing session yet, but between the Wii test and the Software Testing World Cup, I do, and the, the blogging 
and testing friends' websites or even people I don't know that are on Twitter. Um, <laughs> we tend to do a lot of testing in my spare time as well. Okay. So there's no stands this year, right? What's that about? Are you, are you going to go to Fusion instead? What's Fusion? I can't keep up with all these conferences. I don't even know. It's a thing. <laughs> oh, Fusion. Wasn't that started ages ago by... Oh, I'm going to check now before I say the wrong thing. Matt, Matt, did you miss the Let's Test that is coming to Australia this year? Uh, I heard Let's Test was coming to Australia. Yes. So it's in September. It's going to be nice. But that's Australia. That's not New Zealand, right? Well, that's not. Uh, all the events are in Australia this year. I'm going over for a rapid software testing course in June for OzWIS, the Aussie workshop on software testing. That's in Brisbane this year. Oh, hey, Dean. Hi, Dean. <laughs> Can anyone actually hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, we can hear you. I've got thing playing around with this for the last 10 minutes trying to get it working. Yeah, I noticed you were on and off. And so, uh, um, Dean McKenzie, ladies and gentlemen, another uh, famous uh, Oceana tester who I don't know well enough yet and hoping to get to know through this competition. Dean's uh, actually going to be at Let's Test. You could see him there if you come over, Matt. He's just written a blog post about it in advance. When is when is Let's Test Australia? When is it? Okay, I just posted something for um, Harrymon at uh, yahoo.com for blowers. So I'm doing some uh, I'm doing I'm doing some setup for blowers so that they can have uh, multiple accounts, not just trying to use one. So I just pasted something in the chat for that. So if somebody wants to carry that over, yeah, I'll take that. September, yeah. September's right. protected for family vacation. Sorry. Yeah, with the baby, I'm not doing as much traveling as I want as as usual this year. All I'm gonna do is two weeks in Europe in May and June, um, Agile 2014 in Florida in July, Cast in August, in October I'm going to Canada for KWS QA, and November I'm going to Germany for Agile testing days. So, it's going to have to be a light year for me. So, just a little bit of traveling. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just, I just got an email that we sold some training in, um, in, in, in Colorado in June, and I'm just like, really? <laughs> you know, the, 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 there's a part of my brain that sees dollar signs, and there's a part of my brain that's like, that's, that's enough already. I can't do it. I can't do it. And family vacation, of course, is going to be vacate to leave. We're going to go somewhere because I have a million, you know, hotel points. But I don't really want to. It's, I'd like to staycate anyway. But tell us about Dean. I, I, I don't know Dean very well. No. Um, what is there to tell? Not much. Um, I flip around the edges of the context-driven community and jump in for the odd nibble here and there, I guess. Um, I don't know. Probably the most interesting thing, thing is I'm starting a new job in a couple of weeks for Flight Center, which is one of Australia's bigger travel companies doing test automation. So talk to us about this test automation you speak of. Are you driving a browser? Are you getting below the browser? Are you doing TDD? Are you doing... What does that mean? Uh, that, yeah, well, that's an interesting question and one I can't really answer. Um, I believe it's UI. They haven't given me all the details. Um, but it's really a training position. I've, I've never done it before. I know that I understand the concept. I know how brittle UI automation is. Um, but it's all a learning opportunity for me, really. So um, we'll, we'll see what we see. Nice, yeah. I talked to someone the other day, and they named a. Uh, they were looking to hire someone to do testing stuff, and they wanted to do automation, and they, they named a GUI driving framework. 
and love it. I can't. I it the, it was a weird conversation. They said we don't we don't want to just test functional testing, but we want to use QTP or something like that. And I'm like, how does that work? What? <laughs> right, right, like. Okay. Well, you can actually use your, you know, page objects and web driver points to use for performance testing as well. But okay, so uh, so 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 Mike's giving a question. We got we've got a question uh, that was asking about uh, which functionality do your users most use. In other words, which part of social text are the users most active in? And uh, oh, how I hate to give this answer, but yeah, it. It depends on the customer and what they're using it for. Uh, very, very often, uh, I mean, so, some customers use the wiki pages very extensively, and that's their big, big thing. And other users tend to use the signals and uh, a, a variety of uh, widgets to see who's been posting what, where, and what comments are being 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 posted. Uh, so it. Yeah, it, it, it genuinely depends upon what the customer values and what they want to use, and some use different different elements uh, more than than others do. It sounds like such a cop out to say that, but it's 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 a fact. Thing. Uh, I would say wikis and signals is a place to start. I'd be interested in people and searching people for different. Thing. So that what you can do is it's kind of an activity hub where you can uh, tag people with different things, tag them as tester. For instance, you tag two guys as tester and one guy as manager. You click on tester, you should see two testers. Yeah. And you click on an individual tester, you should see their activity. You should be able to see the signals they're making and the wikis they're making. After that, if you understand what you're doing, I would say play around with dashboard and widgets. There have been some specific changes to widgets, so... There are widgets for view activity of people, view signals, view um, there's all kinds of view, view what's happening on different wiki pages and groups and all kinds of things like that. And I'd see if that's accurate and, and then click around and click through it to, to see if it can populate the pages that I just clicked on. That's just me talking. And Siggy, yeah, you're right. I, I've mentioned on the text before. Um, um, whatever the tool is, usually even with the GUI driving tools now, you can hit a REST API. So you, it is possible to get below the GUI. Um, but that's sort of like the second conversation, right? The, the first conversation, the major use of most of these tools yeah. um, is to do click, 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 inspect. That's how so while, most so while, while I've got everybody here, just just to make make sure I don't want to have people uh, dragging on too long, is there anybody who, from from our current uh, crop, is there anybody who has not been able to get into the app yet? Uh, I the the blowers group, I we we did a, a confirmation and a and a reset password, so everybody should be able to get in. There shouldn't be any reason why you can't. I just want to make anyone, sure. If they, um, sorry, can anyone from the blowers group confirm that in the comments? I've been trying to email passwords out to those accounts, and they're bouncing back to me. Mm, okay. Thanks. Hmm. Okay. So we're getting a question on the YouTube channel of describe social text in three words, and my three words would be wiki, signals, and social. Um, I don't know if Michael would... You, 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 everybody can use their own, but um, wiki being a Hawaiian word for quick. Um, <laughs> Warwick Cunningham invented the wiki in, like, the 90s, 80s, as an editable web page. <laughs> you click the edit button and change the text. And um, you could also create a link to a page that didn't exist, and then, then you save it, and you click on that link and fill that link in, and it creates this sort of self-organizing, self-directed, emergent property for documentation. So okay. what, that I, meant, what that meant is that if you've got an HR page that says you get two weeks of vacation a year, and an executive comes and says, we're going to make it three, he can click edit, he can change it, he can click save, and now there's a history, it's version controlled, and it says three yep. weeks. 
Yeah, so I so I can go even better. I I can I can uh, describe social text in two words, and it's social collaboration. That's the that's the whole idea. Is we want to be able to allow as many people as you want, or as few people as you want. If you want to be able to, uh, you know, write something that's going to be the, you know new legal guidelines for your organization and you only want to have two people in the organization discussing that particular document while it's being while it's being developed uh, you can do so and you can make it so that it's a very private thing and uh, even the rest of the organization wouldn't be able to see that so that's that's one of the ex so uh, the, the ability to you, you can collaborate with hundreds of people or you can collaborate with two people and you can do it all out in the open, or you can have it as locked down as you want to. So there's there's a broad range of experiences that you can have, but the 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 real point is is just that you can go in and you can quickly uh, make changes. You can quick you you can have a revision if you decide ten ten revisions uh, down the road. You go, you know what? Revision number thirty five was so much better than this. Bam! I'm just gonna go back to it. And you can do that. So question, should we be able to upload EXE files and post them, or would it be a security issue? Uh, we have, uh, yeah, there, there, there is a limitation to what kind of files you, you can upload. And uh, again, I've been going through and verifying in certain places that uh, th there, there, are, there are some configuration options that I realized that uh, I, I had left open, and so I'm turning those off. So uh, for some of the... So for some of the issues that were seen earlier in regards to um, in regards to scripting or or being able to put in uh, to, to actually be able to put in HTML code, uh, I think that you will find that that's not going to be as effective. And if that is the case, then that's my that's my fault for <laughs> not switching that little element off. <laughs> So uh, I just I'm just I'm, I'm just saying that for anybody that if uh, if there's like oh we got a definite definite issue I'm just asking can you try it again the point is if you if it was an issue and you got it to to do something strange and unusual and it's not doing it now um, well that means that uh, the config option that I set took care of it but it's still worth noting it's that it's, that that's that could be a potential problem so. But do I understand it correctly that if some business users want to use social text with executable profiles, they could configure it for their own instance? That's a good question. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I mean, we don't. Yeah, we we're not trying to make it so that you can upload. In most cases, yes, we we we've got it so that you can't execute code. Like you can't actually take an executable. And uh, and put it up there and physically run it. I mean, you you I, there's nothing stopping you from. You know, before I say that, let me let, let me have a look. Let me see what would happen if we did. That's the tester in you trying to get out. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I'm, I'm I'm playing product owner here, and I'm saying, no, wait. <laughs> Why don't we just find out? <laughs> so let me go to central. Let's see what happens here. Actually, let me. I just want to verify something in our 47 defects so far. It is 6:25. So it's we're halfway through the competition at 8 p.m. Sydney time. It's game over, right? So if you have been filing bugs, learning about the product, filing bugs, learning about the product, trying to, trying to, trying to, trying to, you're, we're about halfway through. And um, so this is a real release candidate. And uh, Michael and Ken want to know, should we put this up on production, or are there significant bugs that absolutely need to be fixed before we can put it up on production? Now, to be fair, as, as testers, we're never really going to know for sure. There could always be a bug you don't find, especially if you only have three hours to learn the product and that's combined. So we want to communicate in our test report, this is what we think, this is what we know. Uh, maybe this is what we would know if we had more time. Um, this is the level of confidence we have. 
And this is our recommendation to you, management, knowing what we know. And, um, you know, that's how you describe that in your test report is up to you. I will say that several teams tried to use a IEEE 829 standard test report for North America, and it was horrible. <laughs> Those were the test reports that I literally couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do as a crowd owner reading. Like, there's a bunch of bugs listed, and there's a bunch of fields filled out, but I don't know, like, what am I supposed to do? There was a couple of teams that literally just give a free-form one paragraph of text that was more informative than the four, five, six-page IEEE reports that, that had everything bulleted, pointed, and hyperlinked. So, I don't know while if that I, helps you. That's my I opinion. Chip, while I would chip in that um, we also got test reports using a different uh, approach to communicate their, their findings, which were also hard to read and interpret. Oh, yeah. There was a couple of them that I think were using like some internal company format, and the internal company format was heavily metrics-based, so it was like, how many test cases did you run, how many passed, how many failed, and they were like trying to shove what really was three hours of exploratory testing into, into fit this, this paradigm of, I need to give an Excel-based spreadsheet with m numbers, and it, it, it didn't work either. So, um, you know, my, my real advice is just to, is to write it like you're actually, what conversation would you have with an executive if you had, if um, the competition is over and we had 10 minutes and you were talking to me, what would you tell me? And once you've got that, you know, how would you communicate it? And if you wanted to use something like 829 as a guide, that's not terrible, but but every paragraph you want to ask, does this make sense? Does this add value? Is this a good use of an executive's time to read? And if the answer is no, maybe you cut it, right? Yep, pretty much. <laughs> Sorry. Just, all right. And so a question that came in that's been answered is, yes, we are interested in enhancement ideas. If you have those, please share them via HP Agile Manager. And there's also a question about what are the most commonly used widgets. So, well, I mean, maybe this is something that might be better just to actually do a quick show. So let me let me do a share here. Let me get back to screen and let me jump here so I can share a screen. Is that the right one? Yeah. So if we want to go back to say our dashboard and we want to take a look at what the widgets are, if you look at the dashboard you'll see that there are a number of groupings that we have here. So one example is like my groups. This just gives us a nice quick view to see you know, which groups are out there and who's who's doing what if I want to leave the groups or if I just want to you know sort them to see see where where activity is I can do so if I want to just physically delete a group entire uh, a widget entirely since this is mine I can just click on remove and drop that particular widget or do the same thing here and I can decide to put completely different widgets in but here's a, here's a good example here. So for if I want to like see who's who's been active, who's who's made the most edits. Well, look at that. Siggy's made 43 edits in the last week, actually in the last 90 minutes. So Siggy's on a roll. <laughs> so that that would be an indication to me that I might want to take a look at what Siggy's been actually editing and to see where where uh, where he's been going. Uh, it's something that I. Could have mentioned, should have mentioned before that uh, that also is kind of cool. So we want to go and take a look at uh, our content menu. So the workspaces allows us a list of the workspaces that we've been actively act actively working with and have a listing for. Recently view allows us to take a look at what we've personally been poking around at. If we want something more than that, like we can go to say in this case Oceana Central. So every account has its own central. Uh, workspace and then there's this jump to option and it gives us a number of areas that we can go take a look at and one of the most common is just to select on what's new 
So if we wanted to see what's been edited in this uh, workspace, you know, in the last day or two or however many things have been done, we can go in and we can take a look to see, okay, what are, you know, the, the documents that we most care about. And as you'll see, many of these are the things that initially get created. So, cool. But, but again, so let's go back to dashboard and we can go back to widgets. And uh, it just genuinely becomes down, it comes down to what you are looking to do. We have a number of widget options that you can, you can add. Just click on Add Widget here and you can pick from the ones that we provide. So there's active content or active people, tags. Here's one that's a, that's, uh, that's a new one. This is called the carousel widget. So we can put, if, if we want to click on add, just add now for carousel widget. So we could actually in here put a number of different items in. So if we wanted to say edit the content of this carousel widget. So if I wanted to post an image, post a video, or post some kind of rich text document, I could do that. And if I want to drop in a video per se, Oh, no, let me just think of something real quick. Um, So as you see, you, you can add anything that we want to. Let me. I think I've got a World Cup uh, element in here someplace. So did you notice that Michael did a classic customer thing where as a <laughs> tester you say, how, what do you care about, Mr. Product Owner? How would your typical users use this? And he said, well, it, it all depends on how your users would use it. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I, I, I know. How would you use it? Well, it, it depends on what you, would, what you would do, right? But I'm trying to come up with yeah, and, reasonable, and so. reasonable use cases for how my customer would do it. Which is I, why I had to basically say, let me stop explaining and let me just do one. <laughs> it's, um, it's hard to describe. Like, we expect yeah. that product owners to. And this is something that I've seen, and, and we could argue about it both ways. But a lot of testers that are good testers, they really want their customers to test for them. Right? And there's just two sides of the cliff to fall off on. On one side of the cliff, um, you know, your test strategy... I've run test competitions where I said, given this piece of software, what would your test strategy be? And people's highly respected people, people whose names are up in lights, have said, well, I would, you know, get the customer together and get us all in the room and figure out what the most important things to test are, and then we'd test them. Well, really, that's the best because 
I mean, I understand there's some facilitation skills involved there because the customer doesn't know what they want, but, like, what would you do? Well, I'd do what the customer said was the most important. We only have three hours. <laughs> and on the other end is the sort of... So the, the, the trap that I fall on is the overly analytical cerebral. I don't even need to t talk to a customer, man. I'm just going to go in and do this sort of decision, table decision tree based approach and use coverage heuristics to come up with a strategy for it. Here's my strategy. Well, wait a minute. You never even talk to a customer at all. Well, why would I need to do that? I'm excellent tester man. And that's not right either because um, if the customer has strong opinions, if there are common use cases that they would use a lot, you know, we want to cover that more than. than than, than the corner cases. If the corner cases are important, we need to know that, right? So um, it'd be interesting to sort of do a couple things I've been thinking about lately. One, a pull test ideas out of the customer sort of contest, which you probably have to do at a conference live, right? You sequester teams and they get their product owner one at a time, and then they create the test strategy, and that test strategy is the deliverable. Another one that um, I almost said for North America, which probably not a good idea, could you turn in your test report as an MP3 file? I don't know. You could. Or in addition to a doc report, like, here's the MP3 of what I would actually say. Might be fun. Um, yeah, Michael, it's, are you on Pronk, Michael? It's, uh, I can give you the, the defect number. Well, I... Yeah, just give, if you just give me the URL. How's that? Yeah, the URL I put up above, it's, uh, group 69 in social text. Okay. But I think that maybe, I think that maybe it, um, 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 I think that maybe... Because I used Chrome, it um, the, the attack doesn't work. I think it might just be an IE bug. Hmm. Okay. So you're talking about the uh, the description. The JavaScript should probably not be allowed here. Yeah. The XS, XSS hack. But in this case, it's just print, so it's just printing the text. It's not actually executing it. Yes, that's what I'm seeing in Chrome. So I, okay. I don't know if I, it was different, or I, I can go try it in a VM in IE and see if I can I can break it in. Yeah, that, well, well, again, this one of the things I just want to make sure is is that it's possible that because I, I I flipped a bit and when this was put in, now it's not going to it's not oh, going it's not to work slide. anymore. Is it yeah. a configuration thing? Yeah, that that's that's what I'm trying to determine. It's it's possible that uh, okay. I did. You know, in, in the rush to get everything set up, I didn't turn something off, and I think I know exactly what that is. So okay. if that's the case, then well, it's it's something that we can handle. But uh, my well, mistake. So we, we, need to, we need to um, remember that because when we oh, yeah. scored the bugs, this was this is this won't be reproducible, but it was it's, it's it was a valid bug when it was entered. Yes, and that's what we want to make sure that we are. It's still a valid bug on Firefox. Is it? Really? And it breaks the page somewhat. The page won't continue loading once it pops up that um, alert. Well, that's awesome. And yeah. you do, so you're doing that in Firefox. Hold on a second. Let me take a let me take a quick look let there. Take a look. <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm loving these bugs that are getting raised. They're excellent. So you're gonna you're gonna love this, Michael. I went to um, I went to Firefox, which probably hasn't been complete. I don't use Firefox much. Probably hasn't been completely purged of everything in 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 the cache in years. <laughs> and the default password is devnil one at socialtext.com. The, the default user. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, don't mention that too loud. <laughs> um, now wait a second. So you are so I just loaded it. And so I am getting the text that's appearing, and that's normal. So in this case, if somebody were to enter in that script alert, all you're going to see now is the actual text. Yeah, it's working. So, so I, I don't know if, if the rest of the page won't load. It just says uh, are you looking at are you looking at ST Group 69, or do you have another page? 
a different page. Look, can I see it? What's your number? Yeah, what's your number? My number. Send us, send, give us the URL. Just all groups. Um, oh, the group directory? Yeah. Well, that's different thing. Hold on a second. Yeah, let me take a look here. So I can bring that up. And... Your company currently has seven groups. I just have to apologize to all the people on YouTube waiting for their questions to be answered. We're just <laughs> bug and um, we've it's, gotten it's, so, so for me, on, on Firefox, when I go to all groups now, it goes to test one, which is the group that I made with it, and it has the XSS hack, and it stops. It's the same mm. thing you got. Okay. Yeah, it is stays that, is that because Now, is that because of this XSX hack or a Let's. different bug? I'll go change my group's description and see what happens. Well, it was working for me before this um, uh, cross-site scripting attacks were put in. Fantabulous. Okay, go ahead. What's, what's the next question from YouTube, Kim? Okay, um, the primary use case for comments, is that just for desktop users or are they created and consumed by mobile users as well? Just a second. If we go to workspaces, and if we look at Yeah, when I took that, when I took the the CSS, the, the cross site scripting hack off, it works. That's really interesting. But that didn't actually execute. Maybe it, that's weird. That so means it's it's, a, it's 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 something I'm going to want to take a closer look at. Absolutely. Mobile, so again, mobile, I mean, for mobile, you can um, use comments in mobile. Yes, yes. I just did, and people do. Um, and there was another question. Which functionality do your users most use? So which part of social text are the users most active in? I would say, uh, again, this, this, this harkens back to a comment I made about about, about 20 minutes ago. It's, I would say it's, it's probably a toss-up between the actual wiki pages and, uh, the, and, and, the, and the signals. Those seem to be the two areas that get, get the most... Uh, that get the most Activity, at least from from the conversations that I have had with, with with our customers, and also just noticing our own pattern of use. Actually, the question was asked twenty minutes ago, so I guess I just missed the answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's okay. So, confirmation then. Yes, the answer is. Uh, in most cases, the wiki the wiki is the uh, is the primary area because that's where the content is, and the signals is the, is the uh, communications channel. So those are the two that, at least in my experience, get the most use. But then you know, but there's also a spreadsheet uh, system that's used, and that's been been used for a number of creative purposes. And there is also um, you know there there, there are a number of uh, Ways that you can configure the widgets so that you can drill down and get key key details of information. But if I had to put my money on which which two items are are the most actively used, I would say it's it's signals and wiki pages. Okay. What are your thoughts on using Yammer as an oracle? Presumably a um, what's it called? Similar product oracle. That's a. It's it, it is certainly a, it is certainly a valid uh, option. We 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 do have that d that option to do so. It just just not on this machine. Um, but yes, we can. I mean, the point is, of course, we want to be able to look to see if 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 there is an expectation that uh, one tool behaves a certain way, and uh, people would expect that we would behave the same, or we or or we behave differently, and there's a specific reason why it would behave differently, then yes, we would want to be able to to look to that. 
So I, I would say that we don't, you know, it's, it's not like we spend a lot of time in, in, in Yammer, but we do have access to it. And we have accounts for it so that we can, we can make comparisons because it's important that we understand what everybody's doing. I would be more interested in Twitter as an oracle, but um, that's just probably because I'm more into Twitter. I just don't use Yammer much. And I think the, the metaphor is pretty similar, maybe, unless it isn't. I don't know. I, I would say that our, our our signals is kind of it's it's kind of a cross between uh between the options you can get with Facebook and 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 with Twitter in the sense that you can you you, you the size of the messages when you see that that 400 uh, block message that's configurable so you can decide how large or how small you want to make it uh, you know the the administrator can say we don't want to have our signals be these big massive you know tomes we want to limit it to 200 to 200 characters you can do that or you say nah 200 characters is too small we want to be able to allow a more free free form conversation we'll make it so that you can post 750 characters or a thousand characters and you can you can fine tune that I would say from a Tessa's point of perspective um, any oracle which you deem uh, reasonable and where you can argue your Findings um, should be game to use. Oh, absolutely. Michael, you're still on screen sharing. Okay, goodness, let me get out of there then. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, you don't want to see me jumping around too much. <laughs> I want to raise a point from the test reports, which we spoke a little bit earlier on. Um, where we got a broad range of good, not so good um, test reports. There were also quite some uh, teams which really used a um, refreshing, interesting uh, way of communicating it. So without giving too much details and hints to uh, the OCA in our teams. But uh, as Matt already said, um, we are more or less game to receive any kind of test reports, um, audio files, standards, uh, Word, Excel files, etc. Um, but nobody's stopping you from using your creativity uh, to surprise us in a good way and still convey your information. We got one that was a PowerPoint um, uh, for North America, and it was, you know, I'm pretty down on PowerPoint as a, as a communications medium. But it was surprisingly well written. It was very clear. It was concise. It made its point well. Um, it wasn't the sort of classic, lame, stupid, big bullet point PowerPoint. And uh, I really liked it. Uh, just a question. Would we prefer to have improvement suggestions raised in the defect management tool or just in the test report? I would go with test report. Um, did you say what kind of improvements? Cause Suggestions for enhancements. Because if they're usability bugs, file them as bugs, you'll get credit for non-functional bugs. If they're just like, wouldn't it be cool if it integrated with Snapchat? Well, yeah, it's probably in the report. Okay. <laughs> Why doesn't it integrate with Instagram? I mean, where's my Instagram compatibility? I need to be able to whatever you call it when you use Instagram. <laughs> like, what is Snapchat? Is, are they, is that the same thing? I don't even know. Sim similar idea. The, the, the point behind Snapchat is that it just disappears. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Instagram doesn't disappear? What about Pinterest? No. There's no... How do I pin a wiki page? There aren't too many social networks, man. You could do that in Confluence, right? You can pin a wiki page in Confluence. You can pin a wiki page in Confluence, and then you can have it automatically post to your Foursquare, right? Confluence. <laughs> wow. <laughs> made all that up. That's getting painful, man. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent development is on Foursquare, though, so if you happen to be in Allegan, Michigan, you can check in on Foursquare when you visit our corporate, corporate headquarters.
So uh, you can, of course, post to Twitter, seriously, with the hashtag STWC2014, and we'll read it. So there's YouTube comments. There's Twitter. You could email us. I'm trying to check my email, although it's a little delayed. And you could file bugs. I should go look in the bug tracker soon. We've had a question whether Mike is in his garden at the moment. <laughs> he switched to photo, so we can't see. Nicola Owen, you are welcome. <laughs> Posted saying, thanks heaps, uh, STWC2014, for answering all my questions. Plenty more to come. <laughs> is, is Yammer a competitor? I think they are. I don't know if Michael's probably going to be sort of close-lipped about that, but... Sort of in a, a competitor in the sense of like a company that offers less features that aren't as good. Sure, <laughs> they're right. I take the fifth. I'm not going there. <laughs> okay, there's a question here. Are our bugs marked to accuracy of our severity rating slash opinion in addition to accuracy of steps, etc.? Certainly severity is part of it. But it's subjective, right? Yeah, if you think it's high and we think it's medium, we're not going to ding you points. If you think it's critical and we think it's ridiculous, then maybe. The only, the only gotcha there is if you think something's slow because you have possibly haven't thought through the impact that that could have in production. That's just something that would be taken into account. If you're asking so you can make them all critical so that we'll read them first. <laughs> that does work. Yeah. That actually does work, but that is... Work, but oh. after a while, you're probably going to annoy us. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it works once or twice. Every yeah. judge has their own scheme. I think for Oceana, we might be able to go in more depth because we had 40 teams, more than that, for U.S., North America, and we just couldn't do... A couple of people suggested heuristics... On, on the on the on the judges list that we're just very very did they do this two points did they do that two points did they do that two points we didn't it's, it's, there's no way but um so just to give away if you're watching listening carefully just to give some my strategy I sort bugs by criticality and look at your criticals first and if you have criticals marked that are unreproducible and written poorly and don't make any sense then I'm not gonna go a whole lot further. Gonna look at the titles, but not the bodies of the rest of the books. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna add that if if the if title doesn't say critical in it, or at, at least show that it is critical in the title, I would, I would reject that criticality. Yeah, they can put that in the severity in the bug tracker, right? But right, if it isn't, it isn't kind of obvious by the title that it's a big deal, right? Like, uh, you know, some security bugs. If we happen to know what that security bug means because we're professionals and we can read the title and go, yeah, yep, that's a good call. Right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, for instance, if there was some remarkably common login problem or something, maybe that's critical. But, um, yeah, and then I go down. 
And if, if the criticals are fascinating, interesting, and valuable, then we'll, we'll keep going down. I'll probably send some of my favorites on to um, the product owners because it might be reasonable for Oceana, but for, for North America, it's 600 bucks, 700 bucks filed. So I pick my favorites that I think are well-written, that are important, that are valuable. Send those on to the product owners at TechSmith, and they tell me, wow, that was a big deal. You know, you're getting some points as a team. And they say, can't reproduce it, doesn't make any sense. We think the person just didn't understand the feature. Not so much. One thing you might want to do is see if other team members can reproduce it before you file it. Because uh, uh, I know for Snagit, we got a lot of bugs where they might have been good bugs. They might have been real problems. But there were reproductions they missed. So we can't reproduce it. I'm talking about the same bug filed by three different teams, but it just doesn't always happen. There's some other reproduction step missing. Um, so, you know, if you want the maximum points, you have to balance how much time do I spend investigating versus how much time do I spend filing bugs versus how much time do I spend on my report versus... Because um, there's an hour left. We've only got one hour to go. So at this point, I would expect people to start asking questions about um, 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 reports. But maybe you're eavesdropping on the last round, so you already know it all. Who knows? Hmm. Eavesdropping What's, our, out. Uh, what's our smallest team size that we've got today? We have a couple of teams of one person, but uh, also even though we have teams of one person, I'm trying to determine... <laughs> The activity level of those one peoples, but yes, we have we have teams we have teams of one, and most other team and uh, teams of four. Uh, that's the that's the spread and everything in between. So some people are really really into like some people are just private people, and um, three hours of testing by yourself, watching the video is is all the social interaction that you need. Personally, I think the majority of people. Um, find a lot. It's just a lot more fun in a small team. You're banging. You're, you're, um, Michael and I were at a test competition in 2011, and I think there were five or six of us just going across the table, <laughs> heads down. I was pretty heads down by myself, and Ajay and Elena Hauser were uh, working as a team. And and then, like every 20 minutes, Marcus Gardner would say, "Pick your heads up." what's the status, and we list the features that we tested and what we thought needed more exploration. It's just a ton of fun. And I you, hug, we... you hug the only whiteboard that was on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> um, yeah, we made best use of available resources quickly. Yes, we did. Uh, but uh, uh, I think it wouldn't have been as fun with one person. That's just me talking. So I hope I hope this is you know fun for you and a learning experience. But if it's not fun, you know we're doing something wrong. I even got a, an award in that competition, which I don't speak too highly about. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up. <laughs> That's all right. The award we don't speak about. was the worst bug report. So I know how to judge that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple more questions coming through from YouTube. Cool. Um, Nicola's one, is the signal supposed to not be sent straight away? For example, she sent a signal and it said in two minutes to who hmm. tested. That's... Well, no, I mean, if if you if you have sent it, what, okay. One thing you should be aware of. So that, that let's 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 take a look at something here. So there are a couple of options. You can actually in your signals. Now there's two, there there are a number of different streams for signals. You can look at the actual signals page itself, and see what uh, what is being posted. You also have on the dashboard. You can take a look at your signal stream, but you have a filtering option that you can set. Ooh, hey, look at that. That 
<laughs> you have a really tall screen, Michael. <laughs> Am I sharing at the moment? Not in no. the screen. I'm All just right. looking at your head because you're looking into the ceiling. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Let's see. Um... Oh, because I'm up on my on my on my upper window here. Yeah, I'll show I'll show you later how this is set up. It's it's a little goofy. Um, one of the options that you have, you go to, if you, possible that uh, it's not displaying simply because you haven't. If you click on the downward arrow up near the top of the activities widget you have a choice for the level of activities you can uh, you can look at who's contributing and what groups you're looking at so you can have it wide open so it displays all events from everyone within all groups or you can narrow it down so you could say instead of all events which will say I edited a file or I liked something so you see everything if you look at all events you you, you can instead click on signals and all you're going to look at is signals. And then you can also look at, uh, do you want to see um, who's the contributor? Do you want to see from everybody? Or do you want to only see uh, contributions from people that I follow? Or for, place, or for contributions where I'm actually part of the conversation? Or do I just want to see my comments? So you can dial those down as to which elements are interesting to you. And then you can also choose which group you want to actually physically post to or not post to. So my guess, and Michael can correct me if he thinks it's ridiculous, is the clock on your client is different than the clock on the server. And she posts something and it's um, the server says the signal was sent at oh, 7.02 p.m. and her client is 7... 7 p.m. and it says your signal was sent two minutes from now, right? Which I think is a bug. I think I actually, I think I remember this bug from like mm. when I worked at Social Text. <laughs> Does it give another uh, timestamp on uh, tooltip as well? Just a guess. I mean, I could be totally wrong, but 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 that'd be my guess. This is two systems. I don't know which ones they are. Are not talking to each other. Well, there's a way to test that. So we'll see what see what comes back. Yeah, sure. Change your change change your hard change your hardware, um, change your machine's time and ship for fresh. Okay, uh, a couple more questions. Um, sorry, just up here. With security a concern, are there any historical areas areas of concern? So things that might have been problematic in the past. Well, general. I mean, generally speaking, of course, we want to make sure that, uh, and we, and this is one of the areas that that we want to. You don't want to have it so that uh, you know script code executes. That's definitely not a good thing <laughs> because it it can cause problems. We want to avoid things like cross you know cross server scripting or embedding of executables or anything that could potentially cause uh, something to maliciously run. We do have an option in our code where um, we can actually set it, set it up so that if, if, uh, if, widgets, if widgets are set up using iframes, for example, um, you know, there, there's good and bad to that. And if you choose to say, you know, I don't want to run the risk of running iframes, you can actually, on, on a global level on your server, you can actually say, any widget that's got an iframe in it, I don't want to run it. We're just going to turn that off. So you can you can protect yourself from that exploit, but at the same time, if something has an iframe, it doesn't display. So y you got to balance. Okay. Um, a question maybe for Matt and Mike: Will we will participants be given feedback regarding their entry, or will they only hear back about who, which team has won? Yeah, um, I think Mike just answered that, and or I saw an email or something. But but um, 
Um, so, so I've been pretty. We haven't made a public announcement about that. Our intention is that if you email us and ask us for your scores, we'll give them out, and there will be a, a ranking of the top few. I don't want. There's a comment from Mike on it. Yes. So basically, we would like to, um, but we're always in the balance between the amount of judges we have uh, in opposition to uh, the many, many teams we have in each uh, continent. So um, we will definitely put up uh, the winner teams and some kind of rankings and also um, the best buck uh, if it's um, sensitive okay for the according product owners, um, but yeah, to go in depth uh, for the teams would probably not be possible, only on request. Yeah, so... Um we should probably talk as judges. I don't know if you guys have seen the spreadsheet that we've been throwing around, but it's got the different categories. My suggestion with judges is that you get in there and get a feel for average. Spend an hour in the bug tracker. Spend an hour reviewing test reports and say, oh, I kind of know what a 10 out of 20 is for every category. And we've got a heuristic around non-functional, which is a little bit more complex. Uh, and we can all score. I think we can. I think we can all score Oceania. I don't think we have to worry about coverage the way we do. We might for Asia. Um, and then we can look at that. And if there's wild differences in scoring, we can call a judges meeting to say, "Why did you give this team a 20 when Matt Matt gave them a three, or vice versa?" Um, we'll come to a, you know, come to a winner pretty quick. So that's the judging process. This is the first time anything like this has ever been done at this scale anywhere ever. Period. Um, I, I, I not only we're leading the way for testing, we're kind of leading the way for competitions of this type. I don't know of much else that's being done like this. So um, we're going to have some hiccups, and we really appreciate you sort of. Um, um, working through it, especially cause testers, because testers love to say, you screwed that up. Like, we just love to do that. We just, you know, that's, that's our thing. And to say, you know, mistakes are going to be made. We're humans. We're imperfect. We're going to work our way through this together. Is Captain America gone? No, he's still there. He's still there. You know, that's, a, that's cool. It's, it's, it's nice to be part of this slowly growing community. It's, it's fun. <laughs> It's fun. So somebody, there's another message here. Yep. Somebody sent sent out the, the to um sent out the spreadsheet. Um. What else? Well, you've got about an hour left. I hope you're working on your report. It's amazing how much time these things take. You think <laughs> you're just gonna knock it off, and you look at your clock, and you go, ah, I have three minutes left. And we are gonna start penalizing pretty heavily for more than a few minutes late on those test reports, which you will be emailing to testreport at softwaretestingworldcup.com. That's testreport at softwaretestingworldcup.com. Uh, I'll, put, I'll put, probably put it in the comments to YouTube. I'll refresh the, uh, refresh the YouTube and see if we have any more comments coming in. <clears throat> One thing I like uh, on our community um, is also from the local judges um, that everybody will chip in and uh, assist the whole event. So, for example, we talked about the uh, scoring uh, kind of heuristic. Uh, we want to have uh, to handle really like huge uh, amounts of team like Asia, Europe. We had to cut 
cap them on 250 teams. I think uh, I said 100. I think I said let's talk, cap it to 100, and somebody at, at, at DNA said, well, we'll see. I don't know. What it was, is, was 101 really that bad? <laughs> and then somebody emailed me and said, we've got 250. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm yes. hoping all the judges, when we get to Asia, I'm hoping all the judges in Europe, all the judges will, will, will sort of chip in. Yeah. And we'll come up with some kind of coverage strategy, but I interrupted you. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, but uh, that's a good um, statement because uh, one of the African judges, also for the African continent, uh, I think Nicolas uh, Kotze, um, he already said, ah, okay, um, his continent is still due in June. Uh, but he went and uh, created some kind of scoring uh, heuristic, which we probably also uh, send out for the judges to give a rough idea what a zero uh, on the scaling means and what a 20 could mean. So, and yeah, with all the little inputs uh, from everyone, we really get a good foundation to uh, repeat it next year. Uh, I think definitely we learned we need, uh, or we could use more uh, local judges because the waiting list for Asia and Europe is still nearly the same size like we have on active teams. So we could have 500 teams, um, <laughs> but I think that would be not fair to Matt, uh, the local judges, um, to have it done because on the other side we also want to give uh, quick feedback. So our internal goal is to have uh, the judging done, the scoring done in maybe one or two weeks. Which I think we should be able to hit for Oceania pretty easy. We, at this point, we got to worry about what are we doing for Europe? How the heck are we going to do Asia? <laughs> you know, it's really. I think I said 100 teams. I'll go check my email. But um, the other neat thing we should talk about is the worlds, right? The worlds in in Germany in um, November. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah, if I got all my ideas sorted and financed and. Uh, implemented, it will be cool. But <laughs> in the end, we want to have like a real sports event for our testing profession. So I want like live reporting, I want cameras, I want audience. Cheerleaders might be a problem, but yeah, all stuff uh, supported by a good German beer and a nice atmosphere. Yep, yep. And um, that's going to be Monday, November 10th, right? Oh yeah, I have to check. But yeah, it uh, coincidences with our local German custom of uh, Carnival, so where people dress up fancy and start uh, celebrating. <laughs> nice. So, November 9th in Germany, if you don't win, there's a wild card round. So there's seven continents, but surprisingly no one no one was super excited about representing um, Antarctica. So if you want to represent Antarctica, come to Germany the day early, November 9th. We're going to have a wild card round. Anybody that comes to the conference can, can come to the competition. And the winner of that will represent Antarctica in the world. So even, <laughs> even, if you, even if you don't win today... Even if you don't win today, there's a chance for you to get in the competition. So come on, come to Germany. I'll be doing a half-day tutorial on the 10th in the morning on um, Lean Software Delivery, which is which is the new hotness, and um, um, Lean Software Testing. And uh, uh, it, it's 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 exciting. I'm I'm excited about it. Um, I finally have. Now this is going to get me in trouble, but I believe I have discovered some metrics that are not terrible, that you can actually use to measure and manage a software test team or software testers or the software development process, the test yeah, portion yeah. of the development process. In the real world? And, and, and they're not yeah, they're terrible. Real. They're not terrible. Yeah, right. Oh. That's my claim. They're not <laughs> terrible. Oh. I know. It's, it's oh. dangerous. Oh, so goody. I've only been studying this thing for, I've only been doing this for 17 years. And I finally have something that I'm going to talk about in public. So and, when are you going to share it? Is it going to be on the conference, or will you share it before? Well, I'm, well, okay. So I'm going to be doing it in Spain, in Madrid, in May. They'll be doing a day-long tutorial on lean software testing. I'll be doing a day of it in uh, Estonia uh, in June. Probably going to mention it in the Netherlands when we do test retreat in L. We're talking have about it in the cast. Have you tried them out? What what are your empirics? 
empirical evidence. I've been doing this. I've been doing this on consulting assignments for the past uh, two years. Before we did that, we did a little bit of it at social text. So what I've got now is the theory. I've been doing the practices for years. We covered it a little bit in the book, how to reduce the cost of software testing. So that was all method. And now I have a governing theory that joins us. But put simple, right? Here's a couple of numbers that might be kind of important to you, right? What is your regression test cadence? Like from our release test cadence, from we're done this build to we're going to get it out, how long does it take you? Uh, what is your cycle time? That is, this story is the number one story to be worked on, um, and it is... Um, the most important story for our development team. The next story you pick up should be this. From the moment that is picked up till it gets in production, how long does it take? That's cycle time. And you can also do that, by the way, with you can measure lots of things. You can measure test ideas. Test, you can do this with sessions. So if you're doing session-based test management, you can focus just on the test process and say, um, what's the cycle time of a, uh, of, of a session? <clears throat> Touch time, what percentage of the time is actually advancing for a given story or a given piece of work? What percentage of the time are we actually doing it? So I'll give you an example. You're working on a story. This is at a team level, right? You're, you're working on a story as a tester, and you find a defect. So you file the defect, or you maybe you, you edit the story page, and you, you say, hey, developer, found a defect. Uh, and then you stop working on that. Nobody's working on that, on that story now at all. The developer's working on something else. When they finish the other thing, they come back to the story. You say it's the next day, right? They do the fix. They give it to you. They do the fix in an hour. Well, you can't work on it because you're working on something else. You're going to finish that and then come back. So you, the next morning, you have a new build. You pick it up, and you, you in an hour... You modif you re-verify re re the story, and you find that it's good, and you call it done. Three calendar days have passed, but we've only had three hours of work on the story. So our touch time is about 16%. That's not very high. If our touch time was 100%, we'd have finished the story in a morning. Right? So I think touch time is a, is a reasonable metric that uh, helps you improve the throughput of the team. If you make touch time higher, then throughput goes up. Um, cycle time goes down. So cycle, uh, lead time would be the time from um, the, the, the work is defined and you can start on it, and it's done. So if you have a really big backlog of work, you just sort of shove stuff on the bottom and it slowly bubbles up, then, then lead time goes up. And what that means is to your customer, as far as your customer is concerned, it takes a really long time from when they ask for the work to you get done. So there's, what, four measures that are not terrible. So what are you going to do with those times? Is it, You're equalizing all stories to be equally big. Yes. So this is part of a day-long tutorial, mm. and there are risks. There's an hour of risks with this, with any kind of measurement system, right? And um, one of the first things that I want to recommend is identify what your batch size is, whatever we're counting, right? We're counting sessions. We're counting requirements. We're counting stories, and we've got to reduce the variation between batch sizes. If variation is very big, then the numbers won't make any sense. There's a whole section on, on statistics and, and standard deviation and stuff like that. Uh, but if the, if the variation is high, then it's ridiculous. You're, you're counting elephants and mouses and averaging them. That's, that's ridiculous. Right? Uh, there have been a number of different techniques used to reduce <laughs> variation. One of them is story points for Agile projects. I'm not excited about story points like I was five years ago. Story points are okay, but if we can just get all the stories to be about the same size, we could just count the number of stories we get done every two weeks, and that's throughput. So um, I know that that's not the reason we're here tonight, but you ask. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think I, I, see, I see a whole evening discussion here. At least. <laughs> hey, are you, are you coming to cast? Let's talk about it at the test. No, I'm not. Oh, you got to. Oh, come on, man. All right. We'll find some. possibility while here right now. 
I tried to get you to Florida for Agile, man. I we 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 made every effort. You had a great yeah. proposal. I know. Um, but yeah, you're right that there are, like, you need to spend a significant amount of time talking about all of the potential risks for those sorts of measurement schemes, and you need to have a significant amount of maturity and be on the lookout. And I can't get you away from that. I, I can't. Okay, would you say block premature release of product a fair information objective? Uh, significant. Yeah, that's good. That's that's a, that's a good question, uh, Nicola. And I'll go, I'll go reply, reply to that comment right now. You know, Siggy, one thing I could do is I could share with you the, um, we have, for, for the Lean Software Testing course, we have a lot of material, mm -hmm. and if you would not share it, I could put you on the instructor's list, um, because I'd be really interested in your feedback. Um, yeah, so so the, it's interesting with metrics. I've I'm always I've always been cautious about metrics. I'm very skeptical to most metrics. Oh, and, me too. Yeah, and I, now and now I'm working at a company that measures everything, and makes the tools to measure everything, and mm -hmm. so uh, I can tell you that I, after eleven months here, I'm still a skeptic. I'm yeah, no. I <laughs> after you know, 17 years in software engineering, I've seen far more harm than good come out of most measures like that. Most most mm -hmm. numerical measures are a joke. They're embarrassing. Right. They don't stand up to intellectual scrutiny. Mm -hmm. I've got one that I'm going to present at conferences, and I expect Michael mm -hmm. Bolton to get in my face and laugh at me. And I think I've actually got answers for him. All right, cool. Yeah. So I, I was going to add to that is that there are actually a couple of metrics that we are using that I deem usable um, in some senses. In in some scenarios, in some day-to-day -day work we, that we're using. So, yeah, that's a good way to put it. That might make sense for some context, sure. sure. Yeah. At the same time, this is when you put those in an email or a chart and send it outside of your team, you don't know how they're going to be used against you. That's why I'm really reluctant to speak outside of a one-day tutorial. Really, we just did a day of it in Lansing, Michigan, and at the end of the day, I covered about a third of the, well, half of the material I really wanted to. Um, but it was good. It was it was a beta. It was good, and I'm going to cut a couple exercises from the morning, and it's going to give us more time. But yep, it's tough. Yep, 40 minutes, Nicola, that's right. Shocking. So we got the question about what's a good information objective for... We got the... What's a good information objective for the team? Is it to determine if we should recommend blocking release? And um, I said, where did you hear that language? I'm guessing it was RST. And that was correct. <laughs> no, BBST. BBST which is another great course put on by the Association for Software Testing, of which Michael is a board member and I'm a former board member. <laughs> um, yeah, BBST is a good course. 
So is that Foundations? I'm guessing it was Foundations she took. I don't know. I, uh, I heard good things about bug advocacy, but I haven't taken it. That would have been in Foundations. <laughs> All right. So just so you guys know, one of the, the should I, be, I should be more careful. <laughs> I had a lot of fun going to Oradev in Sweden. <laughs> but of all the places that I've been, the most beautiful, the most beautiful would definitely have to be New Zealand. <laughs> it was just amazing. But what was the what was the season that you went to New Zealand? Because I know that you went to Sweden in November, and that is not a bad, not a good season. <laughs> hey, hey, I got, I got to tell you, I, you know, I, I thought it was kind of funny. I, I went to Oradev just last year, same deal no, in November, and uh, you know, may, maybe it's just where I hang out, or it's just maybe I've just been in California too long. But I thought it was pretty funny that uh, when I was talking to a few people and I was mentioning that I was in Malmo and they said, oh, I'm so sorry that you were, you know, that that that, that that's where you were, you know, the, you know it's shame that someplace nicer. And I had to look at them and say, are you kidding me? From what I could see, at least where I was hanging out, Malmo's a pretty nice looking town. Yeah, well, it's in southern, it's so, the southern tip of Sweden, right? And I was, yeah. there in no, I was there in November, so it didn't get dark till like 4 p.m. Um, but it was it was it was really that one was a lot of fun. Uh, the thing about the thing about Wellington is you fly into it, and I think it was Wellington. You fly, you fly into it and you, you pass over the bay, and I don't, the approach was just so low and so slow and so long. That, like I was just like we're flying next to this water with these houses. It's like we, for 15 minutes. <laughs> it was just it was at night it was it was fantastic so uh, if, if uh, you know feel free to tell people that I'm interested in coming down there for things <laughs> so Michael did you take a swim in the sea you know I did not get the option to do the uh, to do the the, the saw treat oh. the, the sauna treatment um, you know, it, it, it just for, it just did not line up time wise, and just because my my honestly my sleep was so messed up that by the time I got finished with doing my talks, really my my main focus was just to find a place to curl up and try to get some sleep. Right. <laughs> that that I, I will honestly say that was the that was one of the hardest um, uh, you know conference experiences I've ever had, you know, of course, flying halfway around the world and then trying to adjust uh, to a radically different time zone was, was, uh, it was hard. <laughs> well, but um, you got to just, you forgot, you got to fly in early and give yourself a day to do nothing. Yeah, I, at least. Lesson learned. It's easier, uh, Kim, it's easier when you have one of those day jobs when you pay, they pay you when you're not working, right? That's, <laughs> that's, that's got to be great. <laughs> Take an extra day, no big deal. Uh, we've got a question here. Um, so, uh, are issues related to third-party widgets of concern, or can we ignore them? Well, we can't ignore them, but uh, the simple fact is is that if a third-party widget is not behaving, there's there's two answers to it. Either it's uh, it's a component that's not working for us, or it's a component that's not working for them, and it would depend upon which which widget it is. I do know that there are a couple of widgets that uh, we've just had to basically say, "Sorry, this is out of our control," because uh, you know whoever made the widget, it's from either an older uh, implementation of the API for that particular item. So yeah, third par third party widgets, uh, we, we we certainly do our best to try to make sure that they work, but there are certain aspects that are just beyond our control. And you know, now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you, if I go into social text and I say, "Hey, show me all the widgets," and there is a Foursquare widget, right, and it doesn't work, you guys should take it off your list of pre-approved widgets you can use, which come in the list, right? That's a very good point. And we file, right. it, we file it as a bug. And realistically, what would happen? Sorry, I'm. I gotta control my voice, baby sleep. <laughs> 
<laughs> but realistically, what would happen is that um, um, you would say, we are using this version of the XML for the widget, and you'd go to the web and find the new one which does work, and you'd update it. Because your website, social text, has a canonical list of approved things. And sometimes the API changes or something breaks or whatever. Uh, as, or you'd have to take it down. Right now, if they go to, what is it, google.com slash widgets or something, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a standard for these things. The widgets, gadgets, it's Google gadgets. Gadgets. But if you go to an external list of, of socially widgety tooly thingies, and it's broken, and then you go into social text, and it's still broken, but you pulled it in from outside, that's kind of outside their control, right? Right. Is it Google Gadgets? I'll get a URL. Yeah. Google.com slash IG is a directory of... Is it slash IG? No. This is what I'm thinking of. That's what I'm thinking of. Those might or might not work. So um, there actually was a Google gadget that was some kind of video game Pac-Man or something. I used to test every two weeks as part of <laughs> testing to make sure that gadgets still work. That was fun. How many Aussie versus Kiwi teams do we have playing tonight? Hmm, that's a good question. Let me. Sorry, take first a of all, look. that's Aussie. Pretend it's a Z, a Z, Z, Aussie. Aussie. <laughs> okay, you don't say Z either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but hold on, I I can probably give you the answer to that. So let's take a look. Uh, I've got it in. Funny enough, that was the same question coming up from the South American teams. Um, they were quite curious um, if they could get really country statistics out of it. <laughs> I think at the moment uh, we don't have it really, um, but that might be a nice improvement um, for next year, just to yeah, satisfy it with these kinds of questions. This kind of competitiveness between countries, I think. <laughs> yeah. Olympics. That's right. So we've got 116 incidents raised in in It's amazing. Let me put my test. Let me put my tester hat on there and see if I can. can I can change that number though. Is a metric for you? Yeah. This is this is this is that, that's a met, that's a number, right? Give me, give me a second and see if I can what we can do with that. Because. Uh. On prong. Oh yeah, that's right. So you, you took the hundred and thirty-two, which is the highest ID, and subtracted. Just under that subtract, table. Subtracted where it says twelve. Twenty defects. <laughs> what? Where? What? I don't see it. We're testing out how many as well. I don't see the number. I was looking at the highest ID, but the problem was that the first 12 are not really bugs. Yeah, yeah I'm just start with 13. So I can show you. There's a number right at the bottom in the sort of status bar. Oh, 120, I see. Yeah. yeah. Right, that's probably accurate. Okay. But that's a number. Not allowed to say any numbers because Siggy doesn't like numbers. So, <laughs> no. No, the objections to metrics are, are, are well warranted and valid, and, and it's, it's there's a lot of ridiculousness and silliness and attempts to control um, control measures that don't make any sense. So, but inquiry well, how metrics. Many, how many bucks did the last um, World Cup raise? Six hundred. Like number of bugs per team or something like that. That's that's a good 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 or bad metric. So inquiry. <laughs> We can just say straight off the bat that we're twenty percent as effective as the last competition. Well, when I was looking, honestly, when I was looking at these defects, and we only had about thirty of them raised, 
they made a, maybe it's because of the nature of social text versus the nature of Snagit. A lot of the Snagit bugs were not written very well, and I didn't know what they meant, and I couldn't reproduce them, and they seemed silly, and the functionality seemed to work just fine, and these seem to be much more specific, and hopefully they're real bugs, right? And I also think if you, out of my head, if you scale up the number of teams in North America and in Oceania versus the bugs they reported, I think uh, the, the ratio is at least close. So here's a question, Michael. Yep. Should I should I be able to inject HTML into my profile name to make my profile name appear in a specific color? It is a configuration option, and uh, we have it turned off. Okay, so some. So it, the answer it, is no. We have a bug. You shouldn't, rate. We have a you bug shouldn't be able to, but somebody uh, did it. Okay, that's something that. Uh, so my my question is. Cool. Can you do it again? Yeah, I'm trying it right now. That's defect number 28. Okay. When did you turn it off, uh, Michael? One of the things that I had realized when when you, yep. when the question was with the uh, with the XSS uh, script there, I, I had mm -hmm. noticed on on a couple of the accounts that there was an HTML option that was still that was turned on, and I had meant to turn it off, and so I turned it off. Oh, and that's be my account then. And that's oh. why, and that's why I'm trying to look to determine if that's the reason why that's happening. Either way, it's still something we need to we need to look at and address. Could be my account then. Well, it's clickable, but it's not red. That's weird. That's weird. So I, it's not. Hmm. I just put this in the comments. Um, on my profile, uh, my middle name is now clickable, and it does is a link, but it's not red. It's kind of weird. So this is interesting. I I I'm not sure. Is anybody else having trouble getting to Pronk? No. No. Um, Reload. It is occasionally flaky, but usually fixed by shift refresh. Mm. It shouldn't be a problem under this kind of load. All right. I'm just. So, I'm Michael, just... Uh, this might this might be a bug that then you should address that the teams are not seeing, and it, it is the administration of these HTML configs that you're. <laughs> Yeah, that's hidden. We're not we're not exposing that today. No. Yeah. We had that we already had that discussion. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that so that yes, there is um I mean the 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 point of the matter is is that uh we have a rich text mode editor and we have a um and we and we have a wiki uh mode editor and we also have the option of having an HTML editor. You know, so you can certainly put in HTML and CSS on the on the pages, uh, and all that that comes comes with. So if if for example a page had HTML elements on it, and I went through and I turned those off, and you loaded that page again, what you would see is you would see raw HTML appear. Just it would just be text. It wouldn't execute anything. It wouldn't run anything. Well, so that is so that is actually on purpose, and that is by design, mm -hmm. that you could, that you have that option to either turn it on or turn it off. And is that all pages, or is it all text fields? I'm sorry, I see, I, I I didn't get what you said there. Or is that is that only on pages body, or does that apply to all text fields? It the idea is is that. Uh, if you configure the ability for HTML to be rendered and then you run like scripts or CSS stuff, you know, where you have the choice to decide for your own you know, like organization if you want to run that or not. If you decide I don't want to take the security risk of that, I'm just gonna turn it off, yeah. you can do so. 
it, 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 it's an administrative option. It's not something that it, an end user is going to be able to access. So it's right. it, it's done at the organization makes the choice. They could say, you know, no, we we love HTML. We want to be able to, you know, make our pages look awesome, and uh, we will we'll, we will accept that certain th certain weird things can happen. But we're not going to do that because we're we're smarter than that, right? <laughs> but in this case, uh, they they may they may basically just say we're not going to you know we're not going to worry about that. We want to run with HTML because it gives us options that. Wiki text and other stuff doesn't give us. Cool. You might oh. want to sit down or, or change your camera or something. No, sorry. I just, no, I'm standing up because my legs are walking. <laughs> I apologize. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, gang. It is. It is now quarter to three a.m. for me right now. <laughs> It has been a very long day, <laughs> so I apologize if uh, I apologize if yeah. I am running on fumes. <laughs> we need to get you access to Prompt because at least that should have some business value for social text, right? So yes, should be good. And for some reason, I am just not getting to it. P r o n q dot com, right? Yeah, we're, I think we need to get you. Not you can, you can log in for a free trial, but we need to add you to the magical special. Unless you've already been done, unless Mike already took care of it. Um, I doubt it. Yeah, I'm not getting anything, unfortunately. So I need. Try that, uh, try that link. You might take over my session or something. Then. Send your link on Skype. Huh. Okay. Uh, one second. Mike Michael Larson, and then I'm gonna email Michael the guy from HP. Okay, we'll get this taken care of. Oh, okay. Um, so we've got 17 minutes left, folks, before your test reports are due, and bug reports are done, and we are out of time. And we start grading, or going to sleep, as the case may, may be, or waking up. It's going to be 6 a.m. Eastern when I'm done here, so I'm, I probably won't be able to sleep. Hmm. Spend the whole day grading and then crash. Or, so what know, time is it now, Matt? 5.43 a.m. Started, oh. started at 3 a.m. Time to get up. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. All right. Same time for another beer here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's time to start getting those test reports done. And really, 15 minutes. So hopefully you've been working on it for about half an hour or so. Trying to figure out what do we tell our client about the status of this software? But we know. What would we do if we had more time? And if we had more time, what would that tell us? Uh, maybe, gosh, we should talk about this next time. But um, focusing might be valuable. We have a three-hour session. What did we focus on? What were the four things that we have confidence in because we focused on them? We didn't really give you a lot of guidance for focusing, and we gave you a massively wide and deep product <laughs> suite test. So we could do a little next time. Mike, I'll have to find out after the judging who the drop bears are, because I owe those that team a beer. <laughs> For what it's worth, I just found out that they also have drop bears over here in New Zealand. Oh. They were in Australia, so. You also have drop what? I'm sorry. Drop, drop bears. bears. Drop beers. Bears. Bears. What's a drop bear? It's one of the group. It's one of our um, the drop bears. It's one of our competitive teams. I'm not sure oh. what that reference is. <laughs> it's, it's also a very dangerous animal in Virginia. Oh, you like a local? Well done. Oh. Show the communication failure on the top 
You just steal my session, Nick. I'm going to raise a YouTube bug that when I switch the comments to say newest first and then refresh the page, I still want to see newest first. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a bit before the Asia comp. What do you reckon? Yeah, they... um. That won't be possible. Since YouTube is blocked in China, we have to find an alternative oh. way to hang out. Yes, did we, did, we'll talk about that offline, I guess. <laughs> okay, we've actually had a question come in about the cross-site scripting um, bug. A question for Michael, is there anything else that you'd like to try and reproduce the cross-site scripting issue other than the instructions on issue number 14? Um, again, I'm trying to... I am at a mild disadvantage right now, just simply because I can't take, I can't get to see what 14 is. It's killing me here. Oh, it's the first one that I, I texted you. I'll put it in the yeah. chat. Okay. Oh yes, yes. Hold on. That one. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Hold on. I think Michael, what they're trying to say is that your configuration does not really cut it. With, uh, no, with no, that it's yeah, it's. It, 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 very good point. So it's something that I'm going to have to I'm going to have to look at and readdress to see what uh, what, what we can do with it. But, you know, it's it's a very good point in the sense that uh, I, you know, we, we tested it with it on or we, we tested it with it off, and it's like, oh yeah, no, it, it works fine. And then because it was turned on, no, no, it's not. So might just be an IE thing, or it might possibly. be by their group, or is it by their group? Is it by their account? That's what I'm trying to determine. So let's see. Yeah, using an Explorer 10, logged in, click the groups menu at the top of the page, click the create group, edit name for it. Let me try something here just to see what happens. If that is the case. So jumping over to. How long can we keep QA1 open, Michael? Can we keep it open for a week without changing it, wiping it, deleting it? so that um, we can repro on the QA1 environment as judges? Um, yeah, I mean, we, 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 can keep it, we can certainly keep it open for a few days, no question. It's, it's, it's my machine. <laughs> so. Right. so it's possible, it's possible, Henry, that um, you actually saved a group and that group is still busted, that group... Um, yeah. So that's, so th so this is what I, so this is what I'm going to check right now. I just want to verify that. But I can't create a new group with that problem. It's yeah. possible that it's, it's possible that it's an IE issue. Um, I'm low on disk space, and I've got IE 11 and Windows 7, and I've got IE 11 and Windows 8, and I've got IE 8 and XP. I don't have IE 10 available right now at my fingertips. But I'm, I'm going to try it. On, I'm going to try it on IE 11. Um, Okay, so right in this case, uh, we are creating a workspace for your group, and a workspace already exists with that name. Please choose another. Script alert, JavaScript should probably, yep, so it converts it all to um, straight text. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's that... Um, that Henry had it saved under different configurations. Okay. So I just need the URL. Actually, you could just make it a self-joined group and email me the URL. Okay. This is fun. Yeah, so it's not so in this case creating the group brand new, making the name, uh, or the or the uh, script option there, it it removes it, and it does not allow it to be printed out to the screen. So, it's a, I would definitely say it was probably that configuration issue, but again, that's uh, 
that still needs to be addressed. Well, we've got 10 minutes left, and folks, I mean, I had to wake up at 2 a.m. for this competition starting at 3. I know I don't look my best. It's <laughs> welcome to my, you know, most private of places in our inner house. <laughs> I'll probably show you my bookshelf, but but um, so thanks for playing along with me. It's, it's been a lot of fun, and for everybody watching the video, hopefully, I'm assuming that you, um, I'm assuming that you didn't watch the video the whole time, but instead played it as an audio track while you were testing. Maybe you have two monitors. But. The drop, drop. Oh, best team name. Sure, I get it now. Okay. So, um, I don't know how Kim is finding the country. When I was in New Zealand, I was told that um, it is a um, cash cashless society. People don't actually carry money much in New Zealand. They use their, right. de their debit cards all the time for everything. Yep. So it's when I did two months, and I never have cash on me anymore. Yeah, at, at all. To the point that I did a talk um, at Stans, and I, I gave away money. It's part of my thing. I, I'm the only consultant that ever paid you, and it's just it's just a like a game show kind of an introduction kind of a thing that gets people to think. And afterward, it wasn't much. I think it was like five to twenty dollars New Zealand, which is, you know, um, <laughs> not a ton of money, but it's not it's not nothing, right? Depending on how much you won. Afterward, people came up to me, kind of embarrassed, and gave me the money back because they just don't. It's, it's New Zealand. You don't carry money. It's kind of weird. You do that for. It. It's also not a typical society, so money doesn't change hands very often. Yeah, yeah, and that's just sort of very different. So I went to uh, Ohio and did the same thing in Cleveland, Columbus, Ohio, in February, and I told the story, and I said, would you all mind if I gave you money? And everybody was like, no, give us the money. It's kind of funny. A bunch of Americans, right? <laughs> Yeah, we get a lot of talks at conferences, even comedy shows, everything, where they say, so I'm from wherever, or they just mention a place or something that people will have heard of, and then there's a pause, and they go, right, well, in America, that would have got a big cheer from the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's but if fun. you're handling a lot without cash money... Uh, do you have any experiences also like robberies go down because there's nothing to rob? I mean, it's New Zealand anyway, so there's not a lot of robberies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. The policemen don't carry guns. They don't need to. Well, you probably... That. That's, that's an entire different conversation. Yeah. But um, not talking about that, but just saying it's not that kind of right. High it's risk very, very, I felt um, amazingly safe when I was down there. I just felt safe. And um, uh, uh, Auckland has kind of a New York vibe to the downtown part of it. I mean, it's kind of a big city, and there's kind of a lot of stuff going on. But I felt very safe. I felt very. Why did my video go out? That's weird. Oh, we can still see you. Okay. Um, I just, I felt very safe, and I felt very, just, uh, you know, I wasn't worried. Um, so, and, and Mamo was kind of similar, too. But uh, Mamo doesn't just, doesn't have a big city vibe. It's an old city vibe, and that's, that's nice, too. So, uh, five minutes to go. If you've got any last questions, now is your time to ask. Um, someone was, uh, Mike mentioned, so the cross-site scripting thing we did talk about on the video. So it's very possible you heard us and said, I better go test cross-site scripting. And if you tested exactly the same bug that we already talked about on tape, we're not going to give you a ton of points for that. <laughs> if you found other cross-site scripting bugs in other areas of the application, 
we're still not going to give you a ton of points for that because we did point you there. But um, um, uh, the, you'll get credit. We'll, 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 we'll find some way to evaluate some credit for other CSS bugs of their places. XSS, SS, X, S, the thing. The thing with the stuff. Yes. <laughs> Are you auto-correcting like Skype? <laughs> that would be fun to test. Testing, auto-correcting, especially AI auto-correcting that tries to figure out what you mean over time. Or tag clouds. Tag clouds is another one that, um, like, how good is it supposed to work? There's a whole bunch of tags for it, and the tags are bigger. Okay. So, three minutes left. What else is new and hot in software testing? Um, I said my stuff that I'm working on now, which I'm super excited about, which is measures that I think are not terrible. Techniques <laughs> to reduce waste from test processes. And you go remeasure, and then measures have all improved. Right? That actually is consistent. Um, if what do you? Have, if they've worsened, they've improved, right? So in other words, that that you do something that organically, naturally, you think would have improved performance, and you go remeasure, and the measures have improved. Like they actually correlate, mm. right? And I listed some of them. What else is exciting and new in software testing? Um, uh, David. Dean, you've been so quiet, I don't... Sorry, Charlie. Dean, what's that's been exciting? That's okay. Mm -hmm. So you're delivering some your tutorials on the metrics that work. Are you they planning on... I said they aren't terrible. Ah, oh, okay. I said um, they aren't terrible. Are you planning to Content. publish them at some point, rather than just giving them over in sort of a tutorial format? Um, looking at slowly publishing them over the next year or so, um, being very, very careful, you know, how, how and pointed about how we do that, both for intellectual property rights um, and for uh, misunderstanding, misarticulation, misquoting sort of stuff. But yeah, it's gonna it's gonna come out over the next year or so. Um, okay. Probably we'll see. I'm talking with folks at SQE about a couple things right now. Love to do a book. Don't have the energy for a book. <laughs> uh, a book with case studies is probably the right way to do it, so it can't be misunderstood as easily. Yep. But I ask you, what's <laughs> new and exciting? What is new? I, I, nothing on my end. Um, I'm enjoying weekend testing. That's fun. Yeah, sure. But that's not really yeah. good. <laughs> well, there's always this argument like, that's not really new, right? That's not. It's not. It's really, new to somebody, right? That's not, right? Like the Chinese invented that three thousand years ago. Like somebody could say, Matt, all your stuff you're talking about is Toyota production system, and it's, that's not new. It's been Toyota was doing it in 1978. Yeah, but the application for testing, you know, same thing. I'm really looking forward to. I want to hear about six months from now how that uh, test automation goes. It's a new job for you. Okay, I'll, do, I'll, make, I'll deliver a report. Tell you what, um, you write it up and we'll publish it in Sticky Minds. <laughs> Very cool. If you're interested. Yeah, sure. Always looking for always looking for new new talent to write for Sticky Minds. And how about Kim? What's new and exciting? What's new and exciting for me, but maybe not for everyone else, is mind maps because. I've read a lot about people using mind maps for test planning and even done for actually doing their testing. And this is the first client where I've had the opportunity to really get into that. So that's been great. Now I've got mind maps on top of mind maps with session sheets embedded, attached inside the mind map that you can click on and use the story numbers down at the end node level and color coding heat map to show which areas are at risk and which areas are not tested yet. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I um, so in the past year, the idea of using a mind map 
with more discipline as a sort of product coverage outline and sort of formalizing some, some things that we've been talking about for years, I've really gotten excited about. And I like the idea of using mind maps. Not like I never really like mind maps. So what? Big deal. It's it's like a it's like a tree. Eh. But you take your mind map that you make and you print it out on the wall and big of your test strategy. And people that don't even understand what testing is or would have no interest will walk by and suddenly you're having conversations about testing that you wouldn't have otherwise. That's the big win for me. That's really cool. Yeah. I tried that first with the pencil up on the wall, and I got a few scribbles on the on the mind map. So then I took it off the wall, went to a random person's office, and sat down and said, "Can I just, you know, show you this for a few minutes?" Within a fifteen minute conversation, I had excellent feedback on our test coverage. What was the priority? What had we missed? And I've heard stories about that, but to actually have my own story and to see it firsthand, so that was great. So I'll be doing a talk about that in Auckland at the end of this month. Nice. Trying to get more people to give it a go. Mike, do you have anything you're working on right now that you want to talk about? Mike or Michael? Mike. <laughs> Mike. Mike Nogans. Mike. No, 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 no. At the moment, I'm getting mentally into test conference for mobile app testing, um, which is in Norway. And so that will be hopefully also some nice scenic uh, atmosphere there. We are on a boat for one day, and I think they have the long daylight one, again. <laughs> it's only one day? I thought it was longer. No, it's uh, three days in total, um, but the uh, remaining two days will be uh, boring in a hotel again. Okay, the that's, first day that's, on I don't feel as jealous. Yeah, so I need to switch uh, my mind and uh, go from uh, testing organization into a workshop and mobile uh, themes again. Yeah, so I'm quite excited and looking forward to that. Oh, that keeps me busy. And I think the official time is over. Yep. Yeah, it is. I was, gonna, I was gonna finish the I was gonna finish going around the circle and, and call it a night. Sure. Yeah. The first bug report is in, which is cool. The test report. Yeah. Yeah, what I'm gonna do for the for the for the judges if you don't if you're not getting the emails because it's not configured, I um I read them and I'm going to upload them into Dropbox and I'm going to invite you to Dropbox and get all the test reports. Thanks. Can you confirm uh, which reports we've received so far, please? Yeah, Adherent Expert Team, uh, Team Annunciation, and Cardinal have all reported in. <coughs> and you're, if you haven't sent that, you don't know where to send that to, that's test report at softwaretestingworldcup.com. And please mention your team name in the subject. Makes it easier for us to sort it. It really does. So while I upload these things into Dropbox, uh, Michael, what's new and exciting um, in software testing? What's new and exciting for you? <laughs> well, this counts as new and exciting. <laughs> I'm pleased. Rather, mm -hmm. rather, you know the. I will. I will admit. I think I'm. I, th I think I'm floating on fumes at the moment. So I apologize if I'm borderline not coherent. But this was good. No, this is this is actually very cool. I mean, you know, we've got a you know, relatively you know s small team. So uh, you know, Ken, Ken was saying there's 36 people hitting on this app right now. That's awesome. <laughs> so. So it is. It is very cool, and it's giving us, you know, some new things to, to, that we can think about on this. Uh, I'm actually kind of excited about the fact that I'm going to be uh, doing a co-talk at Cast uh, in August. And uh, what's really neat is that I get to combine a number of things uh, together, in the sense that I'm doing a talk on on mentorship. And uh, the cool thing is, is that uh, the person that I've been actively mentoring now for about six months is going to be my co-speaker. So, for those of you who are coming to Cast, I hope you will come in and and hear mine and Harrison Lavelle's talk. So I think it's going to be that's one of those crazy, like some software testing group named after a movie or something, right? Like <laughs> the Karate Kid. What do you kind call of, that? kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's what do you call that thing that you guys do? Well, there. Well, yes, it, it, uh, Miyagi Do will filter into the talk, absolutely. But uh, the oh, it's Priscalla's. Was it, wait, I'm trying to remember. Was it Priscalla's? 
Well, Perscalis, well, Perscalis is the organization that uh, I'm that, that I'm working with and mentoring with. Right, right. And and Her and my co-speaker Harrison Lavelle came out of Perscalis, and he is an active, per you know, he, he is actively participating right now and uh, working his way into uh, learning more about Miyagi Do. And we're also using a number of other uh, mentoring mentoring things that we have basically uh, built around an older outdoors program and an older, you know, almost almost tribal approach uh, called coyote testing, uh, coyote teaching, not coyote testing, uh, although it works. And, uh, in fact, I just wrote a little thing, uh, something about it on my blog to, to kind of wet, wet the topic a bit about uh, various things that uh, you can do when you're mentoring somebody to help them help them get past the fear of something without them getting completely frustrated in the process. So uh, consider that a little plug for my most recent uh, test head blog. <laughs> awesome. And, and Siggy, what's new and exciting? New and exciting is that, well, I'm, I, I haven't I have been here for a while now, but I'm still learning heaps. Um, and at last year we work um, as a QA team of well, we're now 15 or something with the whole company of 800 people. So it's like uh, a very low ratio of QA engineers with developers. And um, what we do is real quality assistance um, in terms of supporting the developer teams um, with their testing, with their test environments, test data, and risks. So it's, it's high and low on... Uh, risk management and you know high level uh, risk planning as well as going deep into the last thing I did today was digging into our functional tests uh, um, our, our automation and setting up some extra builds uh, running more automation of different types so it's it's a very broad thing broad spectra and I'm learning heaps Great, I'm happy for you. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. So when you say setting up more automation, what does that mean? Does that mean you are you have the tests that only run sometimes, and you're saying run overnight, or what? What does that mean? So we got automation on everything. Uh, actually, a problem that you might say that we have as a whole is that we have too much automation. Um, but I'm actually in my team. I'm setting up automation on broadening our, for example, Fisheye Crucible, uh, we have, we rely on uh, version control system like Git. So I've been adding some newer Git versions and some Mercurial versions to our matrix, matrix tests uh, on, our, on our builds. So to make sure that uh, our automation that we already have, uh, and it actually finds stuff that um, on future versions that we don't really we, that we don't support yet, uh, and before we support it, they need to run green on our builds. So. Future versions, it finds issues on future versions of Mercurial. So uh, don't support yet. Mercurial just released three days ago. Mercurial, or they announced version 3.0 of Mercurial. Uh, we don't support that yet, and putting it on uh, up on our build. Um, did reveal uh, an issue that so that we need to fix before we could actually uh, say that we would support support it. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand exactly how this. Maybe this now isn't the right time <laughs> to understand exactly what those tests would be like. So you. So those so those tests are actually both. UI level tests, but also integration level tests. So you have your code yeah. that runs over the whole suite, and then you have mm -hmm. your integration plug-in where on the back end we're connecting to Mercurial, I'm going to make some numbers up 1.4. And then you say, no, connect to Mercurial 2, rerun everything, and a bunch of stuff breaks. And you say, oh, it's because we don't work quite yet with that version of Mercurial, and we can go fix it all up. Right? Ish. So we have yeah, it's 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 a complex setup. Um, so, but we run the same suites on multiple versions of Git and Mercurial. Right. Yeah, we did. I mean, 
I remember at Social Text we uh, upgraded the web server, and we upgraded the web server from Apache one to Apache two or whatever, and we reran all of the tests, and we found out there was one little feature off in the corner, which was a specific hard URL, yeah. just completely stopped working. Right? We're like, oh, we need to flip the switch and make that thing work, which we did, but. Um, Finding that manually would have been an incredible huge number of checkboxes that you, 99 out of 100 of them would have worked just fine. Yeah, the, sa the same we do with uh, running on different Java versions. So Java 6, 7, and now that 8 is out, that we need to uh, make sure those run green on our belts to... Yeah, that to makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I think we're done. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 12 minutes after I've emailed five or six different... No, no I should have emailed everybody here to invite them to Dropbox. I've uploaded the files that I have so far into Dropbox. I just got another one. I'll stick around for the next 10 minutes or so, adding stuff to Dropbox as the reports come in. Did you, got... did, you, did you invite us already to Dropbox? Just did. So you guys can check your email while I've got you on the line. What I have noticed one, uh, now that I moved to Australia is that some services do lag in terms of how fast they get their information to Australia, sure. especially sure. like Facebook. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. I thought, had, I thought they had local servers. Well, you know, it you know the the it, it needs to replicate my friends' messages, you know, across the world. So even though the, they sent something on my sure. wall, it doesn't show on my wall until... Sure, well, that's just, yeah, welcome to distributed computing. Yeah, right, sure, <laughs> that makes sense. So I need to know the name of Alice Chu's team. Three, four, so we've got six reports. How many teams were there? Uh, Twelve, I think. Twelve. Hang on, I can tell you exactly. So nine teams have entered bugs, so I would expect to get nine test reports. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, we got thirteen teams. Thirteen teams registered, yes. Um, but only, what did I say, nine entered nine. bugs, and we got seven test reports so far. Seven. Yep. There's last one, ones in. Two, quickly. three, four, five, six, seven reports I have up on the Dropbox now. So two are missing. We got, it's 15 minutes after, so get those reports in, otherwise we're going to start penalizing teams, because it's really not fair to not fair. report in half an hour late. 45 minutes. That's 45 minutes of extra time that you got. That the guys that reported on time didn't get, right? That's no good. Yeah. No. So you guys have access to the Dropbox. I think I I put the the URL. Where's the URL? Well, I didn't put, get oh. any invite. Yet. Dean didn't get one yet. Uh, uh, yep, just got it. Yep, good. You Go did? Good. Who said they didn't? Somebody said they didn't. I didn't. Siggy. Right, let me get you that. You're, I'm going to use your Gmail. Yes. And triple G. So one more test report has yeah, come triple, in. Triple, one triple. is outstanding, uh, is pending. Uh, the blowers team just reported. Yep. Ooh, an Excel. We got a PDF. Any that? All right, Siggy, you should have an invite. Blowers report yep. should just shut up and drop off. Move blowers. Eight plus one.
You know what the hold up is with the last one? Because there's no questions coming through. They're probably just furiously typing, having done this before. <laughs> I can't imagine having to do a report and listen to us in the whole time. When we were in, um, where were we? Where were we, Michael? We were in um, uh, Seattle, and we, uh, um, I was furiously typing. <laughs> and I clicked the submit button, and it was like I had to save it, and then I had to, um, you know, uh, upload it, and then I had to go look for the uploading instructions and find the URL and click the <laughs> button and do the thing with the stuff. And <laughs> it took a while, and um, um, we were six minutes late. And I was so scared that we were going to get like total zero points for your test report. You knew the deadline. You didn't meet it. Nerd. But um, I knew there would be something we got dinged on. That actually was not what we got. We did get killed on one little tiny thing, but that wasn't it. <laughs> so. okay. I guess whether or not it was tiny is debatable. <laughs> I thought it was tiny. So All one right. thing I'll do, uh, I'm going to do before I leave is... Um, oh, sure. Thank I, got, I got a back-channel email from Henry, Mar Henry Martin on um, this XSS thing, and I'm going to try to reproduce it myself. Okay. I can get Thanks in. for putting up the photo, Nicola. That's great to see. I think the only one I'm missing on test reports is the Cardinals, if I'm not getting it wrong. Cardinal test report is up. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got that one. We got that one. Okay. We've got seven now, but we had eight, I thought. <coughs> Someone deleted one? Matt, we had eight, right? Because now I'm just in seven. Uh, I don't know. No. Mm. Adherent expert, team enunciation, adherent clear view, health link, cardinal, drop bears, and who tested it? Oh, blowers. You don't have blowers? Blowers came and then it went again. <laughs> we, could, we, we couldn't establish the addresses for the other three, we had only one person who we were able to register, which was kind of weird. Lowers okay. test report. I'm resubmitting it to Dropbox. I think oh. Chatter Chatterbug is still missing. Yep, a couple hours now. <sighs> Chatterbug. Okay. Well, they're quite late now. I don't... How long ago was their last bug raised? Maybe they're off. I'm not seeing the shutter bug email. All right. Well, if it comes through my email, I'll I'll get it up in Dropbox. I'm not seeing it. Okay. Right. Maybe they've headed off to the pub. <laughs> Speaking of which. <laughs> I would like to be done. And I think we've given 20 after. It's a bit early for the pub, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? It's 8.20 for you guys. Oh, man. For me, it's 10.20. I just mean for you, speaking of which. It's a bit early <laughs> to go. Yeah, that's that's what... Uh, yeah, so, so Mike, you, you made a make good point. So each of the teams... It's it's probably a very good bet that we're going to have a fair amount of variation on the theme because everybody's accounts were were separate, and so I, I I'm almost certain that we're going to see a, you know clusters of the of of the same bugs. Yeah, so teams couldn't yeah. see each other's bugs that they were raising, so they didn't have the option to really search for duplicates. They will. They will. No, they won't. They won't. No, they won't. Right. They won't. Right. So they didn't have a chance to search for duplicates, but that's okay. It means they 
had more chance to be heads down finding and raising issues. Yeah, let's let's. So it's um it's six twenty. We're starting to talk about judgy stuff, stuff that people don't care about. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the broadcast off, but we'll keep on the we'll keep on the um the hangout and see if we have any more administrative stuff to cover. So thanks everybody for playing. We'll be in touch, right. we'll, we'll be in touch by email. Thanks all. Thank you. Thanks.